गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू शाहरुख यस सर यू स्टार्ट यस मे आई प्रोसीड सर या या ओके थैंक यू so i request all the participants and members to kindly be active on the workshop the workshop is uh, ready to begin thank you so i sharuk ahmed student of manik chand pahade law college aurangabad welcomes you all to this international workshop on prevention of sports injuries organized by dr so indira bai bhaskar rao patak mahila kala mahavidyalay aurangabad in association with manik chand pahade law college aurangabad SBS College of Arts Science and Commerce Aurangabad Rajeshri Shahu Arts and Science College Waluz Aurangabad and Indraraj Arts Science and Commerce College Sillur District Aurangabad On the coming occasion of National Sports Day this international workshop is been arranged by the organizers and being a national sports person I consider myself and so of ourselves to be very fortunate and grateful to have such an amazing and sporty workshop and for the successful accomplishment of this workshop we have our renowned speakers with us mr sibu sisu vilane sir from africa dr kartiki shirodkar ma'am from uk dr vishwakash jain sir from gwalior and dr shatrunjay kote sir from aurangabad who would be dealing with their respective subjects during the workshop now I request uh, Dr. Vishal Deshpande sir to kindly welcome our speaker and participants. Uh, Dr. Vishal Deshpande sir. Uh, thank you, Sharuk. Uh, good morning, one and all. I am Dr. Vishal Deshpande, working as College Director of Physical Education at SBS College of Science, Aurangabad. Uh, well, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the international workshop on sports injuries and prevention. Uh, this initiative is to celebrate our anniversary. वर्किंग The pandemic of COVID-19 has made all the competitive as well as amateur players to remain at home from March 2020. It's almost four months that uh, they have not been imparted coaching as well as skill training and body conditioning. It was a big setback uh, to all the elite players as the pandemic has disturbed their macro as well as micro level training plan. Now, after four months down the line. Situation is somewhat recovered. We can say, in coming days, all the sports club will be opened and players can resume to their sports training, maintaining physical distancing. It is quite possible that after the gap of almost four months, players are more prone to injuries at mass level. Uh, keeping these uh, possibilities in mind, uh, organizers have arranged this workshop, where eminent speakers like Dr. Karthik Chiradkar, who is a Sports uh, physio from United Kingdom, Dr. Vishwakash Jain, physiotherapist from LNIP Gwalior, address around twelve hundred and eighty-four participants. I, I wanted to mention this number: twelve hundred and eighty-four participants. They will be addressing in this particular workshop regarding possible sports injuries and safeguarding against them. Uh, in our sports we say that there is no pain no gain but this workshop is for uh, just uh, avoiding this pain sports injury uh, before concluding i must say that i am very sure that all the part uh, participants will take away very useful information regarding sports injuries and its prevention uh, thank you on behalf of all the organizers and over to sharuk thank you thank you so much sir now uh, may i request dr vasudha purohit ma'am principal of ibp mahila college aurangabad to kindly introduce this workshop to the steam gathering uh -huh. please ma'am namaskar good morning one and all yes ma'am myself dr vasudha purohit principal dr so indira bai baskar rao pathak mahila kala mahavidyalay aurangabad 
at the very outset i welcome all the dignitaries of this online international webinar dr sibu siso vilane he is from africa dr vishwakash jain from gwalior dr kartiki shiradkar she is from uk dr shatrunjay kote sir principal msm college of physical education aurangabad all the participants teacher fraternity all the students all all these participants i welcome on behalf of all the organizer colleges six organizing organizer colleges of this online webinar as all of we know this webinar is organized on the occasion of national sports day that is 29th august and this sports day is uh, celebrated in the fond remembrance of a me a legend uh, of hockey that is uh, uh, major dhanchan i pay my tribute to this great legend first of all i wish to share a pride achievement of our uh, college that is one of the coordinators of this international webinar ms manisha wagmare she is from our college she is director of sports and physical education department of our college she climbed the highest peak of mount everest in may 2008 and she is the first lady of this marathwada region to achieve this grand success also she is honored by shiva chhatrapati puraskar in 2017 by maharashtra government we have established shikhar kanya adventure club in our college under her leadership mountaineering activities are conducted through this club and many girls took initiative to participate in this activity now coming to the topic of this webinar that is sports injuries and its prevention as we know this topic is very much important in the current scenario since from the last 5 months due to covid pandemic as uh, dr vishal said all the sports activities are restricted in the new normal situation when these activities will restart the physical fitness of the players will not be that much active as before which may cause injuries in the initial stage of restarting the sports activities keeping this view in mind this webinar is organized to guide the players to fight off the injuries and to reduce the severity and pro probability of injury i am sure the expert guidance by the speakers will benefit all the players to aware regarding the causes of injuries sports injuries and various remedial measures for it thank you thank, thank you very much so, thank you so much ma'am for introducing us the aim and object of this workshop thank you so much uh, before moving to this session i just want to inform our participants that uh, we have question answer session after all the sessions is uh, will com after completion of all the sessions so please do not uh, raise hand or ask questions in between the session we'll give you the proper reasonable time after the sessions of okay so now moving towards the our first session on overuse injuries and preventive measures we have dr kartiki shirodkar ma'am with us as a speaker and i request professor madhukar wakai sir to kindly introduce our speaker Uh, professor wakai sir thank you sharuk good morning everyone for first session of workshop 
We have with us a known physiotherapist and sports scientist, Dr. Kartikeya Shrikar. Bachelor in physiotherapy from St. G.S. College and K.M. Hospital, Mumbai. Also, she did master in sport and exercise science and medicine from University of Glasgow, UK. Madam started her work with the Hill Institute as a junior physiotherapist and consulting coach assistant and has been associated with International Tennis Federation Women's Championship Uttarakhand. Madam has also been a consulting, consulting physiotherapist at Shanti Tennis Academy Uttarakhand and clinical physiotherapist at Physio First Dharkhand. Madam also worked with team physiotherapist for Hans Tumin Football Club and academic physiotherapist and St. John's Football Club, Perth, UK. Apart from high academic career, she has also volunteered in various fitness and training programs. Madam has also been a part of various skill enhancement workshops from national and international level. Dr. Kartiki Siradkar, Madam, has received various awards and the prestigious award by the government of Maharashtra in the year 2011-12, Shakti Maharashtra State Puraskar Aurangabad District Sport Award. Also, Madam, received many awards. Madam represented India in following international championships 12th World Arabic Gymnastic Championship, Bulgaria, 2012, 2nd Asian Arabic Gymnastic, Vietnam, 2010, 3rd Asian Indoor Games and Arabic Gymnastic, Vietnam, 1st Asia Arabic Gymnastic Championship in Thailand. It is a great pleasure to have Dr. Siradkar. Madam. Thank you. Over to Sharu. Thank you so much, sir. Now, may I request Dr. Karthiki Shirodkar, ma'am, to kindly address the gathering. Yes, sir, please unmute the uh, Shirodkar ma'am stand. Hey, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for the detailed introduction. And I'm very pleased uh, to uh, be here. And I would just like to uh, ask the host, request the host to enable screen sharing so that I can share my PPT. Yes. Yes, madam. I, uh, we can uh, audible. Yes, I just need to uh, share my screen. You might. Yes, 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 that. definitely. Okay. I would really like to thank all the organizers and all the colleges to include me in this workshop. And I'm very pleased to say that I'm an ex-student of SBS Science College. And I'm very happy to be here and feel very uh, blessed to be here to contribute in such a big platform. And I really thank all the organizers for the same. And yes. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. So before I start with my presentation, I would just like to thank uh, the big part in my life, the, all the organizations which have played a big role. So University of Glasgow, where I did my master's recently, then Aurangabad Gymnastic uh, District Gymnastic Association, which uh, is a very close, uh, very big part of me, and I have been linked to it very closely. And I'm very proud to say that uh, my senior, Dr. Vishal Dishpande, 
so who has been an idol for us and he's been a senior where to whom we can look forward and i'm very grateful to be associated with this association and uh, say gs medical college km hospital mumbai where i did my graduation and i would like to thank all these organizations to make me what i am right now so let's uh, move on to the next part, the session itself which is overuse injuries and why overuse injuries i chose overuse injuries will come to know in the following parts we'll see what exactly is the mechanism of these overuse injuries what are the common examples of overuse injuries and what can we do to prevent these overuse injuries now as everyone uh, has mentioned that as the covid-19 pandemic started the lockdown has been started since march 2020 and it's been a big time it's been more than 4 3 4 months now and in this lockdown if we say that most of us have been couch potatoes not really couch potatoes i i must assume that we have had our mothers our sisters our wives in the household work but if i say if i consider our uh, training as an athlete and doing the household work we cannot really compare the amount of training we used to do on the ground and the amount of work we will do in the normal household work so definitely there has been a reduction in physical activity due to this lockdown so what are the main parameters which would be important for an athlete for because of this reduced physical activity the first thing is reduced muscle mass so what happens really when we are not using any of our parts what happens is body tries to lessen that amount lessen the part of that muscle because we are not using it very much what happens next time next is reduce cardiovascular endurance now everyone must have uh, experienced this part that if we go on a holiday or uh, maybe a vacation and when we come back and try to run the same amount of distance or maybe at the same speed we uh, we cannot really run and we get tired very soon so what happens really is the endurance which we have had been reduced so these are the main aspects which happen because of the reduced physical activity now during this lockdown period what had happened is we had all the sports which were banned because of the uh, chance of infection so what really happened is all the coaches were thinking that okay uh, there has been so much of training which has been lost there are so many competitions which have been missed and there are upcoming competition what can we do about the qualification and how to manage so all the coaches have been thinking uh, these thoughts since the lockdown and what about the players the players must be thinking that i really wanted to win that competition and because of the lockdown i have been losing on time and will i be able to win that competition and i don't have much time so what happens next is as the unlock phase starts both the coach and the players they have so much of urge to make up for that lost training that they are very excited to go back on the ground and play and do their skills and let it be football to meet their teammates and uh, shoot a goal or maybe the gymnastics do some new elements in every sport they are very excited and even coaches are very excited to go back and train the kids so what really happens after so now as the unlock phase has started we have seen that government has allowed some of the sports but there are also there are many difficulties to uh, really start these sports but as the unlock phase starts we will definitely see this urge and excitement from both the sides to train uh, as before the lockdown so what really happens with this excitement is for example if we were training for 5 uh, days a week before the lockdown and now because we have lost so much of time we would think that okay 5 days might not be enough let's train for 7 days and what happens we are training monday to sunday and then again monday to sunday so it's been too often the training has been going on too often then too much what happens is if we were uh, for example running for like 400 for runners like running uh, 400 meters at once 
So we had started like running thousand uh, meters at the stretch. So it's too much. If uh, for gymnasts, if they were doing their sets, the routines for five sets earlier, and then suddenly they say that okay, I need to uh, make up for the lost time. They start doing seven sets. That's like too much of training suddenly. Then too soon. If for example, before the lockdown, there was a structured plan. Okay, we need to climb stage one, then stage two, stage three. Now, the competitions are coming. The stress is building up. So what coaches or players might think that, okay, let's jump from stage one to three. Let's skip the stage two because we need to just move faster and we need to make up for that time. So what happens is we uh, increase the training load and training intensity very soon. Next is the last part, but very important part is there is not much recovery. So if I say too often, out of seven days a week, we are seven day, training seven days. So there is no time for recovery. And what research says, says is the recovery with the form of sleep, your nutrition, hydration is very important because if your body is not really recovered, the body will not let you improve its capacity. So all these factors, these are the main factors which might be causing overuse injuries. So this is a, a very a common factor, very commonly seen training errors in overuse injuries, which is training load or training intensity too often, too much, too soon, and without adequate recovery. So let's see what is exactly the overuse injury. So. Uh, most of the people must have seen acute injuries, which are which have sudden onset. So if somebody falls down, they might have a fracture or maybe a ligament injury. So there is a sudden trauma. If there is an accident, you know that is a trauma. So after that, whatever happens is an acute injury. So at that time, so that is a sudden onset. But what happens with overuse injuries is that there is no sudden trauma. The damage or the trauma has been building up over and over. So it is repetitive damage. There is no sudden trauma. What really happens is, as I said, there is sudden change in the training. If the training load is changed too often, too much, too soon, without adequate recovery. So that is, those are the main training errors which are seen as a causative factor for overuse injuries. So as I again say that it is a repetitive trauma or repetitive damage. If you keep on doing one thing for a longer time, it might cause some damage in the tissues. And we'll see how to tackle them or how to avoid that uh, trauma being uh, changed to injury. We'll see that shortly. Now, we will see what is the mechanism of these overuse injuries. We saw what exactly causes overuse injury if there is a training error or what exactly it is, but we'll see how it causes. So there are factors called intrinsic factors, which are related to the athlete, which are, uh, which are the athlete specific, for example, age or physical fitness or muscular strength. As we all know that everyone is different. So my strength would be different Someone, my colleague's strength would be different. Their physical fitness would be different. So they are intrinsic. They are specific to the athlete. And what are the extrinsic factors? They are external factors, like training environment or maybe training surface on which uh, we are training or maybe the training methods or the changes in the training. So these two factors, the internal and the external factors, they are contributing factors to the overuse injuries. Now there is a term called overload. So what exactly overload means that if my body's capacity is to do 10 repetitions, my coach would say that, okay, let's try and do 12 repetitions because my capacity is 10. I'm trying to overload my body so that it improves with the strength or whatever parameter you choose. So there is certain overload. Now what happens with this overload is there is microscopic tissue damage. So whatever you are doing, there is a little damage happening inside the body. Now this damage, because of this damage, there might be pain, which is a symptom. So we experience some pain here and there. 
so that could be because of the damage now there are two uh, ways what this pain can uh, make if we correct the cause because of which this pain has been happening so for example if uh, if the training is too much we have progressed really fast if we got to know that because of that the pain is occurring and if we try to correct that cause we try to give the body adequate recovery what body does is it adapts it adapts to the new load and it repairs by itself without any symptoms so if you see that if you put an overload there is some damage there might be some pain but we noticed it on time try to correct it try to do the recovery and body adapted itself but there is another another pathway where after the pain started we continued the activity because we thought no we need to make up for the time and we need to complete that uh, training session or these many repetitions so we try to continue the activity now what happened after the continuation there is an injury because that is a vicious cycle you have pain continued the activity and then again the damage occurred and that causes overuse injury so i as i said that there is a sudden trauma there is repetitive stress which is there on the body for a long time it is not something sudden so if there are two pathways if we correct on the time the body will definitely uh, adapt and heal itself now we'll see the common examples i won't be going in much detail into common examples or how it really happens but i really wanted everyone to know what are the common examples so let's see uh, one by one in a very short uh, time so what is jumper's knee as the name suggests it is uh, mainly seen in the players or the sports which involves more of jumping so it is the the medical name is patella tendinopathy so what exactly is this patella tendon so if you touch your knee cap the lower part of knee cap there is the in, on the lower part there is a tendon and the tendon which the tendon connects muscle to the bone so it is a tendon of your front thigh muscle which is connected to the your, connected to your shin bone so that small part of the tendon which is there it gets injured how it gets injured not by sudden trauma by repetitive trauma by repetitive jumping and if that has not been given any adequate recovery or any corrective methods that might cause overuse injury now the common training error is sudden change in the or sudden increase in the training now these tendinopathies whatever the uh, overuse injuries of the tendon are there are some stages so the stage one is pain after the exercise so if you complete your session there might be pain after you have completed the session the second stage would be there is pain but you do warm up and the pain disappears during the activity but it again comes back once the exercise or the training has been completed the st third stage would be pain during the activity and the last stage would be pain all the time even if you train or don't train there is pain all the time so if we see if we try and respect that pain at the first stage there is a, there are high chances that the outcome of this injury would be better so that time loss due to the injury will be lesser because we are tackling the injury at the first stage so this is one example which we would see the second is achilles tendinopathy what is this achilles tendon again it is a part of the uh, tissue which connects muscle to the bone which is just behind your heel it is just behind and little above your heel now this is commonly seen in runners and it is more of a middle aged runner not really adolescent but middle aged what happens really again as the unlock phase has started and uh, government has allowed outdoor running the uh, athletes might try and run very faster like very quickly the intensity is quite high they might be running uh, for a longer distances and started really suddenly so what happens is again there is sudden uh, there is change in the training and there is repetitive trauma or repetitive damage in that tendon so that is also one of the common examples of overuse injuries the next is tennis elbow now this term is 
quite common and most of the people might have heard it now because it is said tennis elbow it is because it is commonly seen in tennis it is known as tennis elbow but it is not a rule that it might not happen in other sports so anyone uh, or any sport which involves a lot of wrist activity lot of gripping activity they might be uh, tackling or they might be seeing this injury so what is this exactly there is pain on the outer side of the elbow and again that is because of the tendon of these forearm muscles which are acting on the wrist and if the wrist is being used so many times the tendon over here gets repetitive trauma and because of that there might be injury again all these injuries are controllable so if we know that there is pain if we know that there is change in the training we know what has caused it and we can tackle it at the first time before it goes to the last stages where the time required to recover from that injury would be really high and we'll see uh, one of the examples is from a shoulder so now it's, it's a really broad term there are many conditions which are included in this uh, swimmer shoulder but it is mainly pain on the front of your uh, front of our uh, shoulder and as we all know that in swimming there is lot of rotation of the shoulder and now when this shoulder rotation happens the shoulder has to be stable the muscles controlling the shoulders need to be strong so that they support the shoulder in a good way so that the movement is uh allowed and in a pain free manner if the muscles supporting those shoulder are weak or there is sudden increase in the training there might be pain in swimmers uh, in shoulder in in their shoulders so these are common examples like i have not included uh, all the uh, injuries and but try to keep it short so that everyone gets to know what exactly an overuse injury as you have seen that in any of these injuries i have discussed there is no uh, trauma there is no fall uh, there is no in, there is no uh, uh, trauma so it is like sudden trauma it is over it is repetitive trauma it is it has been built up over the time and it is been showing symptoms after some times there is no sudden onset of the pain now there are more examples such as stress factor we uh, all have heard about stress fracture as the name suggests there is stress now this stress is not acute this stress has been build up over the time and because of that if it is not being tackled in the first place there is some reaction the bone gets react the has reaction and then if it is not tackled it turns into stress fracture so all these injuries are examples of overuse injuries now we have seen uh, the examples we have seen what exactly is the overuse injury what exactly uh, causes overuse injuries because if we know what exactly causes it will be easier to prevent them if we don't know what exactly causes there are no there, there are no possibilities that we will try and correct so uh, for example in a recipe um, for making any recipe we know that this ingredient is going to cause some problem we are cautious of adding that ingredient and we will be knowing that if something goes wrong it is because of that one so we will try and correct that next next time so if we know the mechanism if we know the uh, cause of it we can try and prevent those injuries so let's move on to the prevention if i have gone very fast and if there are any questions as uh, uh, sharuk sir said that you can ask later on you can note down the questions and i'll try and explain or try and answer all the questions whatever you have so in these preventive strategies it is a team work if the player decides that okay it's it's my it's my career and i have to decide what to train how to train how to prevent injuries So it's it's not one person's job. It is a teamwork. It is a teamwork from players, coaches, support staff. Now, what does support staff means? It's uh, it includes physiotherapist, strength and conditioning coach, your sports scientist, nutritionist, psychologist, everything who helps in the 
performance enhancement is a support staff. Now we might be lacking in the support staff, but there are still resources. If anyone has any issues with the physio part or the sports science, they can always come to me and I can, I'll try and help them whatever to whatever extent I can. So as I said, and parents, not to forget, because it is a teamwork to prevent injuries. So we need to work as a team so that the player gets best of it. So the player can perform at the best. Next is communication. Now, as we see that communication is important in every aspect of life. So why not sports? If the player cannot communicate anything with the coach, or if the player cannot say that there's something wrong with me, I'm not feeling well, or I'm in pain, or anything, if they are not able to communicate, the player and coach, they will not uh, uh, be together. They will not be in, on the same platform. I would like to uh, actually share one of my experiences from my uh, career as a player. So my coaches, uh, Advocate Sankarshan Joshi and Dr. Makran Joshi, both of them. So the bond was so much that sometimes we, we never say anything from, like, we haven't express anything, but they used to come to know. So the bond was so much that the communication was non-verbal. They would come to know that there is something wrong and they will try and work out together so that the athletes can perform. So I'm really grateful to have such coaches that they would understand the player so much and that really helps in uh, the player's uh, improvement, the performance improvement. So as I said, this is, this is a teamwork, but this workshop is more on uh, players and the participants are more players. So what I'll do is I'll focus on the strategies which players can implement. And I'll also uh, include one of the important strategies which is for coaches, but we will start with the player's responsibility, how they can prevent the injuries. So let's see first one. So I would say respect the pain. They have been uh, taught that there is no pain, no gain. As uh, Dr. Vishal sir said that uh, this workshop is about how to deal with that pain, how not to have that pain. So in this overview, so I understand being a player, there is no pain, no gain. Even I have trained like really hard hours. And, you know, we just try and push ourselves every time. But that pushing the limit is different than injury pain. So what this no pain, no gain means is the pain because of the uh, fatigue is going to be there because of training. But the pain because of the injury is different than the training or fatigue pain. And the players have to differentiate. They need to learn to differentiate between those pains. And in these overuse injuries, this no pain, no gain doesn't work. Because we have seen the mechanism that if there is pain, if the activity has been continued, there will be more pain, there will be an injury. But if we respect that pain and we try and correct the cause, the body adapts itself. So the players, the, we have to notice the pain. We have to report it to the appropriate authority, to the coach or the, to the physio or anything who is an authority, authority person over there. Because we are seen if we try and uh, diagnose the condition earlier, the outcome will be better. The time lost due to an injury will be lesser so that we can control uh, the injury risk. Now, it's very difficult for even for the adults, I would say, to differentiate the pain. So uh, as a physio, we commonly use a scale uh, called pain scale, VAS we call, from 0 to 10. So 0 is no pain. And 10 is the worst pain which you can ever feel. So just trying to imagine where my pain fits in between is very difficult. So what uh, is generally happening is, uh, what, what are the solutions? There are scales with smileys. As you can see on the screen, that the smileys are being uh, shown with respect to the scale of the pain. So if the pain is about 0 to 3, that would be because of the fatigue or the training. So that pain is okay. But if the pain is going about six, five, six, seven, or eight, that means there is some injury. So if the players know how to differentiate between the fatigue pain 
and the injury pain it will be easier for the coaches also and the players to report the injury so these scales are quite uh, uh, easily available on google so if you just try and uh, download these uh, scales you can have in uh, with you and you can just take mark if there is some bad day or you can take mark every day after your training how do you feel that really helps in knowing what your pain uh, scale is now we have been hearing warm up and cool down this is so important and it has to be done but we always forget so as an athlete even i knew that we don't have much time we need to really hurry up and we are very excited to start the training we tend to forget the warm up but this warm up is really really important for the body and actually keep on skipping the warm up every time the body is not prepared for the upcoming exercise so what happens is there is repetitive stress on the body because it has not been prepared well so the warm up is really important now what about cool down the the training session has been finished and we have been very very tired to do the cool down so and the time has finished so what to do let's go home directly and take a shower but if we don't cool down what happens is whatever strain has happened because of the exercise the body doesn't really recover well from the stress and it just continues to so if the stress level is good after the exercise the cool down brings it down if you don't cool down and if you don't recover proper uh, properly after you go home the stress level is over there next day it's going to just build up so the cool down is really important next is there is some differentiation between warm up and cool down what really what to do in a warm up so it has to be specific to the exercise what you are going to perform the dynamic stretching which involves kicking or swings that has be that has to be done in warm up whereas static stretching has to be done in cool down static stretching involves holding the position or stretching that really helps in cooling down now let's move on to the next strategy which is improving the technique so why is it important to reduce the uh, to improve the technique in reducing injuries because if the technique is not proper it's going to stress the body in a wrong way the faulty technique will keep on stressing the body and if that training has not been improved the repetitions whatever we are doing with that incorrect technique are unsuccessful they are unnecessary repetitions whereas if for example in a in gymnastics skill if we don't try and teach the basics and if we try and teach the somersault to an athlete if the athlete doesn't really understand what's the skill he's going to fall down he's going to fall down so many times but if the basics are clear he will learn it uh, earlier and the unnecessary repetitions can be avoided so there are so many facilities nowadays coach is always there to tell you how to improve the technique but nowadays i think everyone has all the players have their android phones they can take the videos or photos they know what is exactly going wrong what is the shoulder angle what is the leg angle and they can correct themselves they can ask their coaches okay this is my video and do you think i need to correct somewhere so you can work on your technique to reduce the injury let's move on to the next part is biomechanical errors so what are these biomechanical errors how can we find out so basically experts such as physiotherapists or strength and conditioning coaches they can help you to find out the errors now these biomechanical error means if there is some imbalance with the muscle strength if there is any imbalance with the mobility so for example in uh, in swimming or maybe in gymnastics there is so much of shoulder uh, mobility involved so if any swimmer is lacking their shoulder mobility they will try and arc their back to get their shoulder above the head so what is this this is compensation from the back if the the player knows that okay i'm lacking the shoulder mobility if he knows he or she knows he can correct it so that the lower back strain can be avoided so these are really very important to understand what exactly is going inside the body i'll just try and give the two examples of these biomechanical errors that in case of shoulder pain uh the upper back muscles which are there the shoulder blades what what we call if the muscles supporting that shoulder blade are strong 
the chances of getting shoulder pain are less because as i said they are controlling the shoulder movement so if the player knows that okay i'm weak over here then they can try and correct those uh, errors and perform well the next one is uh, the buttock muscles so what's the connection between buttock muscle and the knee they are so much away and why my knee pain is connected to the buttock but it the buttock muscles really control the movement of your knee so if those are weak there can be knee pain and as i said because of the lockdown there would be a reduction in muscle strength or muscle mass so definitely because the training has been less there will be muscle strength uh, reduction in the body and they might be uh, one of the risk factors for the uh, injuries so if there is a facility of being uh, of going to the physio or any expert where you can assess uh, as an athlete or where you can ask your players as a coach to go and get them assessed it will be really helpful to avoid the injuries now let's move on to sleep everyone loves to sleep even i love to sleep i hate getting up really early in the morning but what about the sleeping earlier in the night so during the lockdown everybody loves to watch the movies and series and everything so there is so much of screen time which is happening just before the sleep and research definitely says that the more you use the phone the your sleep quality will reduce and in sports there the research has been so much that they say if you have a good night sleep you will perform better next day whatever you were learning the other day the previous day if you sleep well during the night and you perform the skills next day your brain will uh, rewire the skills so your skills will be improved the next day so this sleep 6 to 8 hours of sleep per night is an essential part of recovery for the athlete your body recovers very well if you sleep well so this is really really important aspect of the prevention of injuries now nutrition and hydration I'm not a nutritionist, so won't really go into detail. But the basic part is there has to be optimal nutrition. Now, what is optimal nutrition? Your well-balanced diet, whatever you eat, uh, the normal diet, whatever you eat, is a balance. It has to be balanced diet. Being an athlete, we have to eat more proteins so that our body recovers well. So, do we really need to take protein powders or protein shakes? i would really say that research has suggested that these are supplements so if you don't get enough nutrition from your balanced diet from your regular food your meals then only you need to take supplements but if you eat proper food if you include eggs if you include include uh, sprouts in your diet you will get enough protein and if that is not met then only supplements next is hydration now how many liters of water to drink so there is no uh, there is no set rule everyone everyone's body is different so they need different amount of water so the common rule is the urine color has to be light colored if you see your urine is dark colored that means you are not drinking enough water so you need to start drinking more water so let's move on to recovery strategies so all these whatever i have discussed really helps in recovery your sleep your nutrition they really help in recovery but what else you can uh, as a player we can do is we can include a pool session so if uh, the training uh, sessions are for 6 days a week and one day is off uh, the players can try and go in the pool and just try and relax because the buoyancy effect really helps in recovering the body not really exerting by swimming but just trying to do the stretches and jogging and light like swimming will really help uh next is ice baths so just dipping your leg or till waist length in the tub in with ice and water so i think we must have seen lot of photographs with uh, athletes just uh, going inside the ice tub so ice really helps in recovering the body it is just for 3 to 5 minutes and it will really help try and help the uh, in recovery now what active recovery means so as i said if the athletes have uh, one day off they can go for a light walking session they can do a yoga session or a mobility session that will really help in recovering their body so because after this lockdown is in the unlock phase 
the training intensity will be higher than what it is uh, the the fitness level in these three months. So these recovery strategies are really important because the, we need to reduce the stress of exercise which is there on the body. So these recovery sessions will help in reducing reducing the chance of injury. Now these were the players' responsibilities to know the to let the coach know if they are in pain. to sleep well to eat well so all these methods have to be followed by players but the main the the common aspect which we saw was training error or sudden change in the training now the coach's responsibility is to plan the training not to increase the training suddenly training load suddenly so if the coaches have coaches diary they can just log down what uh, is planned for today they can Uh, plan weekly they can plan monthly and if the training is planned the chance of training uh, having training errors is lesser so if the training is planned properly the chances of overuse injuries to the athletes will definitely reduce and there are many methods such as periodization to plan the training or to see how much training they have been doing so these training diaries or planning the training will definitely help to reduce the injuries on the coaching aspect now uh, we i'll just summarize whatever we discussed how to prevent the injuries what we saw mostly mainly is how to prevent overuse injuries but these aspects will definitely help in acute injuries also so just staying hydrated we saw that uh, the urine color has to be light color in order to understand what is the hydration level balanced diet supplements are only necessary if the diet is not balanced so mainly the nutrition has to come from your meals has to come from your balanced diet then wearing proper equipment so that you don't get injured the training surface or the shoes or uh, helmets so they have to be proper then on the athlete level they need to see how their bodies are responding so building up the uh, training gradually and on the coaching aspect planning the training in a progressive way so that athletes don't go through overuse injuries next is improving the physical fitness as i said because of the lockdown physical fitness must have been down and we need to make sure that before we hit the uh, the intense training we need to improve the physical fitness so that we can do the skills sport skills properly need to do warm up and cool down really uh, very well so that we can try and prevent the injuries learning the sport properly as i said if we do the faulty uh, incorrect technique it is going to stress the body more and more therefore we need to learn the technique very well so that unnecessary stresses on the body will not be there next is reporting the injury now there are many grave injuries being a gymnast or being a senior in the gymnast i have seen lot many uh, players just falling on their neck and having grave injuries so if the player itself he or she feels that they have been fallen down something is not really well they shouldn't delay they should go to the hospital or a expert and report the injury whether it is neck injury head injury knee injury anything so that is coach and player's responsibility to see the injury or if they have not seen respect the injury whatever the player is saying and report the injury now when i say that respect the pain that respect the pain shouldn't be used otherwise by the players because it's just for their good so if i have pain and i'm just i don't i'm not feeling well so i just convey it to my coach so that okay i'm just feeling i'm not feeling pain pain i'm not feeling well and i'm having pain so i'm not training today so if you don't train the if, if i don't train the it is for my bad so i need to differentiate between that fatigue pain and the injury pain so if my pain is 0 to 2 okay i know that my body might not have been recovered well but yes i can continue but if my pain is 5 and 6 yes i definitely need to report and get it corrected so these are the uh, preventive strategies which can be implemented as a player and one of the strategies i have said as a coach which is coach's responsibility that uh, they can implement to reduce the risk of injury and that is from my part 
thank you so much if anyone has any doubt any questions they can definitely write down note down and i'll try and answer them uh, at the end of this session thank you so much thank you so much ma'am for uh, such an intellectual information and scientific mechanism behind the injuries and the body mechanism of the player and the information you shared that the preventive strategies nutrition and diet hydration recovery strategies about injuries and how to avoid such sports injuries this is definitely very helpful and beneficial to tackle the situations among uh, sports persons thank you so much ma'am and again the participants who have any questions may ask uh, us in uh, chat box they can message us we'll answer it in uh, question answer session thank you so much now moving to our second session on common sports injuries among athlete and their management we have with us dr vishwakash jain sir and i request dr sachin deshmukh sir to kindly introduce our speaker for the second session uh, dr deshmukh sir Uh, good morning everyone welcome for second session for this workshop for for me to introduce our renowned speaker dr vishwa prakash jain sir who is going to talk about common sports injury among the athletes uh, professional education sir has completed his bachelor of physiotherapy from jivaji university gwalior Sir also did master degree specialization in sports medicine from CCS University Merit. Sir has completed diploma in sports instructor potential certificate CRP. Sir also have spent almost his career to ad uh, advising the sports persons and the so so do do a little. Doctor Vishwanath. Vishu Akash Dancer is presently working as an assistant professor and physiotherapist at Lakshmi National Institute of Sports Physical Education, Kallar. Gwalior is also associated with health sciences, sports medicine, fitness and rehabilitation centers. Sir takes special classes and orientation courses for the All India KVs and CBSC teachers of physical education. Dr. Jain sir also worked as a physiotherapist with many national team and all India inter university teams. Sir has treated many sports injury and rehabilitation of national national players. Dr. Jain also published research articles in the journal and he also part of the various enhanced workshop at national and international workshop. It is pleasure to have such a wonderful. multidimensional personality with us today on behalf of organizing i welcome you sir thank you over to sharu thank you so much sir now may i request dr vishwakash jain sir to kindly address the gathering mr vishwakash jain sir kash jain thank you sir thank you very much uh hello yes sir you are audible now ah. okay 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 thank you very much sir thank you uh, let's start with the my presentation the introduction part is already uh, completed so i don't think so ki in introduction ki abhi media requirement hai mai pichla presentation mein bhi dekh raha tha jo ma'am the unhone diya kafi acha presentation diya let's start with Sir, uh, got na? Uh, you are sharing your PPT. Okay, sir. Ah, yes, sharing sir. my PPT. Yes, sir. And you are audible also, sir. Video, video. Okay, 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 okay. चलिए let's start करते हैं हम. Common sports injuries among athlete and their management. Uh, basically, sports and injuries. ये कहना चाहिए कि sports और injuries दोनों का एक साथ एक ही जैसा रहता है. जब भी हम गेम खेलते हैं या कभी गेम एक्टिविटी में इन्वॉल्व होते हैं तो जब भी बेहतर स्पोर्ट ऑलवेज इंजरीज आर देयर राइट तो हम यहाँ बात करेंगे अबाउट दी स्पोर्ट्स स्पेसिफिक इंजरीज जो स्पोर्ट्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स रहते हैं जो स्पोर्ट्स प्लेयर रहते हैं खेलते हैं तो उन सब उनको जो इंजरीज हो जाते हैं 
तो उनका क्या मैनेजमेंट हो सकता है राइट तो पहले डेफिनेशन वाइज हम बात करते हैं वॉट आर इंजरीज वी कैन से दैट ट्रोमा और डैमेज टू सम पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी किसी भी बॉडी पार्ट का ट्रोमा हो जाना या डैमेज हो जाना इंजरी कहलाता है और वी कैन से दैट द टर्म इंजरी इन दी ब्रॉडेस्ट सेंस रेफर्स टू द काइंड ऑफ इंजरी दैट मोस्ट कॉमनली अकर ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज वर्कआउट एक्टिविटी और स्पोर्ट्स सम आर ड्यू टू एक्सीडेंट वी कैन से दैट रोड ट्रैफिक एक्सीडेंट हो जाता है कई बार ऐसा भी होता है कि हम बाथरूम में स्लिप कर जाते हैं एंकल में स्प्रेन आ जाता है ट्विस्ट हो जाता है फुटबॉल प्लेयर्स का भी एंकल ट्विस्ट हो जाता है बास्केटबॉल प्लेयर्स का भी एंकल ट्विस्ट हो जाता है और कई बार ऐसा भी होता है बाथरूम में हम लोग जब जाते हैं तो उस समय भी हमारा एंकल ट्विस्ट हो जाता है तो ये सभी स्पोर्ट्स इंजरी के अंदर आते हैं राइट कुछ इंजरीज सम इंजरीज आर ड्यू टू इम प्रॉपर इक्विपमेंट यूज ऑफ इम प्रॉपर इक्विपमेंट इन सफिशियंट वार्म स्ट्रेचिंग एंड कूल डाउन ना क्लासिफिकेशन ऑलरेडी मैम ने भी डिस्कस किया था क्लासिफिकेशन में बहुत ज्यादा तो अटेंड नहीं कर पाया बट तो उन्होंने लिटिल बिट क्लासिफिकेशन के बारे में डिस्कस किया था वट आर दी टाइप्स ऑफ इंजीनियर क्लासिफिकेशन सो इंजरीज आर ब्रॉडली क्लासीफाई एज ट्रोमेटिक और ओवर यूज ट्रोमेटिक इंजरीज एंड ओवर यूज वी आर क्लासीफाइड टू कैटेगरीज ट्रोमेटिक और ओवर यूज ओवर यूज इंजरीज आर लाइक वी आर डूइंग any physical activity or game of playing regularly karte ja rahe khelte ja rahe hain aur humne uska care nahi kiya hai micro trauma hona start ho jate hain that came under the category of overuse and traumatic or we can say that acute injury game khela turant injury ho gaya that is come under the traumatic conditions now basic injuries hello yes sir you are audible sir audible okay right yes, right yes. basic injuries we can classify the injury into like uh, sprain strain common basic injuries are sprain a strain shin splint cramp knee injury tennis elbow golfer's elbow fracture and dislocation we are sabhi hum log in common injuries kar rahe hain bahut acche se jante hain thoda sa main yahan pe unko explain kar deta hu ki about dislocation hai fracture hai fracture is ब्रेक इन दंटिन्यूटी ऑफ दोन डिसलोकेशन इज कोई भी, भी हमारे ज्वाइंट का कैविटी से बाहर निकल के आ जाना कॉमनली हम लोग जो देखते हैं वो हमारा शोल्डर ज्वाइंट का डिसलोकेशन होता है अनदर वन इज गोल्फर सेल्वो टेनिस सेल्वो नी इंजरी क्रैम शिन स्प्रेंट स्प्रेन एंड स्ट्रेन अभी हम यहाँ डिस्कस करेंगे अबाउट दी वॉट इज स्प्रेन एंड वॉट इज स्ट्रेन स्ट्रेन एंड स्ट्रेन स्प्रेन is stretch or tear of a ligament that connect tissue that sprain is a stretch or tear of a ligament bend of a connective tissue that joint the end of one bone with another sprain means aapka jo ligament hai jo aapke tissues ko connective tissues ko join kiya hua hai end of one bone with another made of connective tissue jo ki ek bone se dusri bone ko connect kiya hua hai Sprain caused by trauma such as fall or blow of the body that knocks a joint out of position and in worse cause rupture of the supporting ligament. So, जो आपका ligament है किसी भी ऐसी condition में चला जाना joint का जो उसको worse condition में लेके चला जाता है. Right? Now, what is sprain can ranges from First degree that a minimal stretch of the ligament to third degree or a complete tear. Normally, हम लोग जब X-ray MRI कराते हैं, तो हमने देखा है कि जो आपका ligament होता है, कभी बार first degree of tear होता है, कभी second degree of tear हो जाता है, कभी third degree of tear हो जाता है. Commonly जो ligament है, हमने देखा होगा tear होता है, वो है anterior cruciate ligament. फुटबॉल प्लेयर्स को ज्यादातर इस तरह का इंजरी देखने को मिलता है तो एसीएल टीयर हो जाता है और भी गेम्स हैं जिसमें इस तरह का इंजरी देखने को मिलता है लेकिन कॉमनली जो हमारा नी का है वो एंटीरियर क्यूशियल लिगामेंट इंजर्ड हो जाता है कभी मीडियल कोलेटरल भी देखा हमने मिडिल कोलेटरल लिगामेंट इंजर्ड हो जाता है कभी लेटर कोलेटरल लिगामेंट इंजर्ड हो जाता है राइट तो अब इसके हम लोगों को पता कैसे चलेगा हाउ वी कैन फाइंड आउट वेदर ये स्प्रेन है स्ट्रेन है किस तरीके से इसको फाइंड आउट कर सकते हैं तो जो साइन है स्प्रेन के उसमें रहता है देर इज अ वेरिंग डिग्री ऑफ टेंडिनेस और पेन 
अलग अलग डिग्री का टेंडेंस होगा और अलग अलग डिग्री की पेन देखने को मिलती है ब्रूजिंग होगा इन्फ्लेमेशन होगा स्वेलिंग रहता है इनेबिलिटी टू मूव अ लिम और अ ज्वाइंट जिसको भी स्प्रेन होगा वो अपना ज्वाइंट को या अपने लिम को इनेबिलिटी टू मूव मतलब मूवमेंट प्रॉपर उसके नहीं कर पाएगा ज्वाइंट लूज हो जाता है लैक्स है एंड अनस्टेबल ज्यादातर यही देखने को मिलता है कि ज्वाइंट लूज होगा लैक्स होगा अनस्टेबल होगा एज कम्पेयर टू दी स्ट्रेन अभी देखिए आप स्ट्रेन वॉट है स्ट्रेन स्ट्रेन इज अ ट्विस्ट पुल और टीयर ऑफ अ मसल और अ टेंडन राइट देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्ट्रेन एंड स्ट्रेन इन स्ट्रेन लिगामेट इज इन्वॉल्व एंड इन स्ट्रेन द मसल और द टेंडन और इन्वॉल्व अ कॉर्ड ऑफ टिश्यू कनेक्टिंग मसल टू दी बोन राइट इन एन एक्यूट और नॉन कॉन्टैक्ट इंजरी दैट रिजल्ट फ्रॉम ओवर स्ट्रेचिंग और ओवर कॉन्ट्रेक्शन राइट नाउ द डिफरेंस इज दैट पीछे वाली स्लाइड में आपको दोबारा दिखाऊंगा कि साइन में यहाँ पे डिफरेंस आ रहा है साइन एंड सिम्टम्स थोड़े डिफरेंस होते हैं यहाँ पर होगा देर इज अ वेरिंग डिग्री ऑफ टेंडेनेस ऑफ ब्रेन ब्रूजिंग इन्फ्लॉमेशन इनेबिलिटी टू मूव अम और जॉइंट जॉइंट लूज एंड लैक्स इन स्टेबल बट इन स्टेन पेन इज देयर मसल स्पैजम एंड लॉस ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ देर इज लिटल बिट डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्ट्रेन एंड स्टेन लॉस ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ इज देयर एंड मसल स्पैजम इज देयर राइट नो नेक्स्ट इज शिन पेन टर्म शिन पेन सभी लोग बहुत इससे अच्छी तरह से वाकिफ हैं और ज्यादातर लोग देखते हैं कि कॉमनली वेन वी आर स्टार्टिंग अ न्यू एक्टिविटी जैसे कि फॉर एग्जांपल हमारे फर्स्ट ईयर का स्टूडेंट जब स्टार्ट करता है कॉलेज में एल में जब लोग एडमिशन लेते हैं तो उनको सबसे ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम जो आती है वो आती है शिन पेन की शिन स्प्रेन की क्यों आती है अब ये से जब ट्वेल्थ पास करके कोई आया फर्स्ट ईयर में स्टूडेंट जिसने लिया एडमिशन तो सबसे पहले क्या होता है कि नॉर्मली क्या एक्टिविटी होता है कि भाई सुबह थोड़ा दो घंटे आपने वर्कआउट किया दिन में थोड़ा बहुत टाइम मिला किया नहीं किया कोई बात नहीं जैसे ही उनका एक्टिविटी हमारे कॉलेज में स्टार्ट होता है तो मॉर्निंग का थ्री आवर्स का सेशन होता है देन आफ्टर उसको थोड़ा सा थ्योरी क्लासेस होता है उसके बाद फिर इवनिंग का प्रैक्टिकल सेशन होता है तो जो लोड होता है वो एकदम से बढ़ा दिया जाता है तो सबसे ज्यादा लोड जो बढ़ने के बाद पेन आता है कॉमनली वो आता है शिन बोन में अदर जॉइंट्स आर ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व बट कॉमनली जो पेन हमने देखा है वो शिन में आता है ये प्रैक्टिकली मैं आपको बात बता रहा हूँ जो भी बता रहा हूँ so the term shin sprain widely used to describe any sh short of leg pain associated with exercise right or the term actually refers to the pain along the tibia along the tibia or shin bone the large bone in the front view of your lower leg to jo hamara lower limb hai ya ye kehna chahiye ki hamara shin bone hai usme sabse zyada ye pain shin ka commonly dekhne ko milta hai now what are the risk factor for shin pain right inner fiber medial side hota hai inner side hota hai kisi ko outer aspect mein hota hai kisi ko ankle mein bhi pain uska jaane lagta hai so what are the causative factor for the or risk factor for the shin sprain first overuse or incorrect use of the lower limb overuse or incorrect ab overuse kaise hota hai for example aaj jaise ki session maine start kiya training mera training session hai ये मैच फाइव किलोमीटर्स का रनिंग कर रहा हूँ ठीक है कई स्टूडेंट हैं जो रेगुलरली फिजिकल एक्टिविटी में इन्वॉल्व हैं वो रनिंग कर सकता है लेकिन कई बार ऐसा भी होता है वो पार्टिसिपेंट्स जिनको एक्टिविटी में स्टार्ट लेट हुआ या उनको एक्टिविटी इतना ज़्यादा करने का आदत नहीं है तो आपने उनको भी फाइव किलोमीटर का रन कराया उन्होंने जैसे तैसे उसको कम्प्लीट कर लिया राइट कोई दिक्कत नहीं नेक्स्ट डे आपने फिर फाइव किलोमीटर्स कराया फिर फाइव किलोमीटर्स कराया फिर उसके बाद कुछ दिनों बाद आपने दोबारा से सिक्स किलोमीटर्स को लेके गए अब क्या होगा कि सिक्स किलोमीटर रनिंग करने का कई से आज कई लोगों को लेट एडमिशन हुआ या किसी ने आज ज्वाइन किया आप उसने फर्स्ट डे सिक्स किलोमीटर से रनिंग किया तो दैट इज दी क्या होगा उसके साथ ओवर यूज हो जाएगा अब उसको कंप्लीट तो करना है थ्री किलोमीटर फोर किलोमीटर रन करने का लास्ट वन किलोमीटर बचा उसको भी उसको कम्प्लीट करना होगा तो उसको कम्प्लीट करने के चक्कर में क्या करेगा वो इनकरेक्ट यूज करेगा लोअर लिंग का कैसे भी करके उसको कम्प्लीट करना है इनकरेक्ट यूज ऑफ दी लोअर लिंग दौड़ा जा रहा है दौड़ा जा रहा है दौड़ा जा रहा है कम्प्लीट करने से उसका मतलब ओवर यूज एंड इनकरेक्ट right one more important factor is that improper stretching inadequate warm up training session start hua stretching proper nahi kare warm up proper nahi kiya obviously baat hai pain aana start ho jayega running or jumping on hard surface 
कॉमन फैक्टर कॉमन पॉजिटिव फैक्टर रीजन रनिंग करना है भाई ग्राउंड सबके पास अवेलेबल नहीं रहते ये ग्राउंड है भी तो रनिंग के लिए मान लीजिए ज्यादा पार्टिसिपेंट है तो क्या करते हैं कि रोड पे रनिंग स्टार्ट करा दिया हार्ड सर्फेस पे रनिंग स्टार्ट करा दिया तो क्या होगा रनिंग और जम्पिंग ऑन दी हार्ड सर्फेस विल कॉज दी पेन इन योर शिन बोन नेक्स्ट इज रनिंग इन शूज दैट डोंट हैव इनफ सपोर्ट अब फॉर एग्जाम्पल शूज की बात करते हैं मैं अक्सर ये बात लोगों को बताता हूँ कि अगर आपके पास प्रॉपर शूज नहीं है रनिंग करने के लिए या आप शूज पहने हुए कई बार क्या होता है कि हम लोग शूज खरीदने के लिए गए तो क्या ब्रांडेड देखा नाइट देखा एडी देखा रिबॉक देखा जो भी वट एवर यू लाइक आपने देखा उसका और उसको खरीद लिया लेकिन रनिंग के पर्पज से शूज नहीं है या आप उससे फैशनेबल शूज खरीद लिया तो ये भी आप पेन का फैक्टर होता है सिन पेन के लिए नेक्स्ट इज ओवर यूज हो चुका है एंड दीज इंजरीज आर ऑल्सो एसोसिएटेड विद दी फ्लैट फीट और ओवर प्रिनेटेड फीट अब यहाँ आ गया आपका फ्लैट फीट ओवर प्रिनेटेड फीट जैसे कई बच्चे रहते हैं जिनका नॉक नहीं हो रहा है फ्लैट फीट हो रहा है उन लोगों को भी ये इस तरह की प्रॉब्लम देखने में ज्यादा नहीं नाउ नी इंजरी Because of its complex structure and weight bearing capacity, the knee is most commonly injured joint among all the joint. किसी भी game का हो whether is the player is playing football, basketball, any game, कोई भी game cricket player हो, gymnast हो, gymnast का तो बहुत बुरा हाल होता है. कोई भी आप game जब खेलते हैं, तो उसमें सबसे ज़्यादा जो injury होती है, वो knee joint पे होती है. because it is a complex structure and also weight bearing joint right knee injury can result from blow or twist of the knee from improper landing after a jump right improper landing after a jump basketball basketball aapne basket diya land kiya twist kiya knee injury anterior cruciate ligament damage ho jata hai kai baar meniscus bhi damage ho jata hai क्यों क्योंकि जैसे ही आपने लैंड किया और आपने ट्विस्ट किया आपको ट्विस्ट करना होता है रिटर्न बैक करना होता है अपने अपने ग्राउंड में पहुंचना होता है अपने एरिया जाना होता है तो जैसे ही आप लैंड करते हैं और ट्विस्ट करते हैं और इंजरी हो जाता है रनिंग टू हार्ड ये भी एक रीजन है टू मच और विदाउट प्रॉपर वार्म हर जगह एक ही क्वेश्चन या बार बार आता है कि विदाउट प्रॉपर वार्म इंजरी होना ही होना है नेक्स्ट इज बेसिकली जो नी में इंजरीज होते हैं या नी में पेन आता है या स्पोर्ट्स इंजरी में आता है हम उसको तीन कैटेगरी में देखते हैं एक तो रनर नी दूसरा होता है आई टी बैंड इलेटिवल बैंड फ्रिक्शन सेंट्रोम एंड थर्ड वन इज टेंडन आईटिस और टेंडन रनर्स नी और पेन ऑन पेन और टेंडननेस क्लोज टू और अंडर द नी कैप क्लोज टू और अंडर द नी कैप एट द फ्रंट साइड ऑफ द नी ये पेन आपको कैप में या पटेला के नी के फ्रंट साइड में कॉमनली देखने को मिलता है सेकंड वन इज आई टी बैंड और इलेटिवल बैंड फ्रैक्शन सिंड्रोम ये जो है आपका एंटीरियर सुपीरियर के लेके स्पाइन से आई टी बैंड का स्टार्ट होता है आपके लेटल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द नी पे जाके इंसर्ट करता है तो जितने भी हम फिजिकल एक्टिविटीज करते हैं तो नी का फ्लैक्शन एक्सटेंशन जितने मूवमेंट होता है साइकिलिंग करते हैं उसमें सबसे ज्यादा आई टी बैंड का ही इंजरी या पेन देखने को मिलता है थर्ड वन इज टेंडिनाइटिस और टेंडिनोटिस टेंडिनाइटिस और इट इज यू कैन से दैट डीजनरेशन विद इन आर टेंडन और यूजली इट ज्वाइंस दी बोन ये तीन तरह के कॉमन जो पेन है या इंजरीज हैं देखने को मिलते हैं और भी बहुत सारे क्लासिफिकेशन है लेकिन कॉमनली जो देखने को मिलता है वो यही होता है हाँ लेकिन कई बार मैंने ऐसे भी देखा है कि कुछ जो प्लेयर्स होते हैं उनकी डिमांड होती है या उनको इंजरी होती जाती है नी में तो कहते हैं कि सर हमको हो क्या रहा है तो कई बार डिजनरेशन भी हो जाता है तो जो डिजनरेटिव चेंजेस नी में आना स्टार्ट होते हैं वो अलग अलग स्टेजेस में होते हैं तो मैं यहाँ पर आप लोगों को थोड़ा सा एक्सप्लेन करूंगा अबाउट दी नी इंजरीज और दियर एंड टीयर ऑफ दी ज्वाइंट नी ज्वाइंट और वी कैन से दैट ऑस्ट्रो आर्थराइटिस ऑफ दी ज्वाइंट देर इज डीजनरेशन और वी कैन से दैट वीयर एंड टीयर ऑफ दी ज्वाइंट ऑस्ट्रो आर्थराइटिस राइट बेसिकली इट अफेक्ट नो डाउट मिडिल एज एंड ओल्डर एडल्ट बट इन स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन देर इज डी जनरेशन ऑफ द ज्वाइंट इज देयर बिकॉज वो नॉर्मल एक ले पर्सन से ज्यादा अपने ज्वाइंट को यूज करते हैं 
बेसिकली नीज ऑल्सो वेड वेर इन ज्वाइंट तो ज्यादा तक देखने में जो आता है ऑस्टियो आर्थराइटिस या वीयर एंड टीयर वो हमारे नी ज्वाइंट का होता है लेकिन हिप ज्वाइंट में और स्पाइन में और सम फिंगर्स में भी इस तरह का जी जी देखने को मिलता है अब हम आप देखें अच्छा व्हाट आर दी फैक्टर्स दैट आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दी ऑस्टियो आर्थराइटिस ऑफ दी नी और वीयर एंड टीयर ऑफ दी नी ज्वाइंट बींग ओवर वेट कॉमन सी बात है सभी जानते हैं अगर आपका वेट ज्यादा है तो आपको नी में चेंजेस आने के चांसेस है एजिंग ठीक है कोई बात नहीं स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन के लिए एजिंग की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं है लेकिन हाँ बींग एन स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन आपके जैसे ही अर्लियर जैसे आप थोड़ा एज हो जाता है गेम एक्टिविटी बंद करते हैं इनिशियली फिट होते हैं तो जैसे ही एक्टिविटी बंद किया आप लोगों ने उसके बाद क्या होता है वेट बढ़ने लगता है फिजिकल फिटनेस लिटिल बिट पूर हो जाती है चलिए कोई बात नहीं कई बार ऐसे भी होते हैं प्लेयर्स कि जो अपना फिजिकल फिटनेस को मेंटेन करके रखते हैं तो देन आफ्टर क्या होता है कि आपने वेट फिर भी मेंटेन करा है लेकिन आपके ज्वाइंट में इंजरी हो रही है आपने प्रीवियस गेम खेला था कभी जो आप लाइफ गेम खेलते थे उस ड्यूरेशन में आपके ज्वाइंट इंजरी हुआ हुआ कभी कभी ए सी कराया होगा या किसी भी तरह से डिसलोकेट हुआ या कभी हुआ तो क्या होता है पुराना ज्वाइंट इंजरी प्रीवियस आपके जॉइंट में इंजरी हुआ है ये भी आपका एक रिस्क फैक्टर है फॉर दी ऑस्टियो आर्थराइटिस और वी कैन से डिजेनरेटिव चेंजेस इन दी नी ज्वाइंट नेक्स्ट वन इज जॉइंट दैट आर नॉट प्रॉपरली फॉर्म सम जॉइंट्स आर नॉट प्रॉपरली फॉर्म लाइक अदर नी कंडीशन जेनोवेरम वेलकम रिकरवेटम एक्सेट्रा ओके समटाइम्स यू सी दैट देर इज अ जेनेटिक डिफेक्ट इन द नी ज्वाइंट कार्टिलेज एंड स्ट्रेस ऑन दी ज्वाइंट फ्रॉम वर्क और स्पोर्ट्स वही मैंने आपको पहले भी एक्सप्लेन किया था कि स्पोर्ट्स एक्टिविटी का स्ट्रेस भी आपके नी ज्वाइंट के डिजर्टेशन के लिए रिस्पॉन्सिबल है बहुत लंबे समय तक खड़े रहना अभी टीचिंग सेशन में आ गए हम ट्रेनिंग सेशन में आ गए बैठने इट नहीं है कोचेस हैं कुछ होने के बाद क्या होता है कि आपका एज फैक्टर रिस्पॉन्सिबल है आपकी एज होती जा रही है प्रीवियस आपको इंजरी हो सकता रहा हो और लगातार आप ग्राउंड पर खड़े रहते हैं तो आपके ज्वाइंट में डी जनरेशन स्टार्ट हो सकता है द डिजीज कॉज इज कार्टिलेज ब्रेक डाउन फाउंड इन दी ज्वाइंट चलिए ये सब चीजें तो सबको समझ में आता है मैं आपको बेसिकली ये बताता हूँ कि स्टेजेस क्या स्टेजेस होते हैं जो आपके नी ज्वाइंट पर डी जनरेशन के दिखते हैं पहला आप देख सकते हैं हेल्दी ज्वाइंट है कौन आपकी अच्छी कंडीशन में है योर ज्वाइंट पर्सनिज इन गुड हेल्थ गुड कंडीशन साइनोफ्लिट इज ओके कार्टिलेज इज ओके यू कैन सी दैट कि कार्टिलेज का कलर कितना पिंक है सब कुछ बहुत अच्छा है नॉर्मल ज्वाइंट है हेल्दी कार्टिलेज है ईच एंड एवरीथिंग इज परफेक्टली फिट एंड फाइन ये हम लोग का हेल्दी ज्वाइंट होता है लेकिन जैसे ही कुछ भी इम्पैक्ट हमारे ज्वाइंट पर आता है तो सबसे पहले क्या चेंजेस आते हैं आप देख सकते हैं एज यू एज योर आर्थराइटिस प्रोसेस इट लुक लाइक दिस बोन कैप्सूल ज्वाइंट कैप्सूल साइनोल फिट एंड कार्टिलेज सबसे पहले चेंजेस आना स्टार्ट हुआ है आपके कार्टिलेज में कार्टिलेज जो होता है आपका ब्रेक डाउन करने लगता है मेकिंग इट थिनर एंड देन क्रिएटिंग क्रैक्स इन इट्स सरफेस जब भी पेन आता है एथलीट को वो हमारे पास आता है सर कहता है सर ये घुटने में आवाज आ रही है क्यों आ रही है बिकॉज कार्टिलेज है वो ब्रेक डाउन होना स्टार्ट हो गया है जब भी आप नी का फ्लेक्शन एक्सटेंशन करते हैं क्रैकिंग साउंड सुनाई देखने सुनाई होता है तो दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ दी ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ दी कार्टिलेज नाउ थर्ड स्टेज या बात कर सकते हैं एडवांसिंग ऑस्ट्रो आर्थराइटिस लुक लाइक दैट अभी आपने प्रीवियस इमेज से अगर कंपेयर करते हैं तो आपका देखिएगा आप कि आपने देखा होगा कि ज्वाइंट का जो स्पेस है वो रिड्यूस हो गया है साइनेबल फ्लूड भी लीक करके साइड से आ गया कार्टिलेज डैमेज हो गया देखिए फर्स्ट स्टेज हेल्दी ज्वाइंट कार्टिलेज इज ओके परफेक्टली फाइन सेकेंड स्टेज एंड थर्ड स्टेज अभी क्या होता है इसमें नॉर्मली जब हम लोग एक्सरे कराते हैं तो क्या निकल के आता है कि हड्डी बढ़ गया है जब भी हम एक्सरे कराते हैं ना तो डॉक्टर से जैट की गैप आ गया है हड्डी बढ़ गया है कैल्शियम लेना पड़ेगा आप लोगों को प्रेस करिए तो यही सीजन सास में आते हैं हड्डी नहीं बढ़ता उसमें देर इज नो ग्रोथ ओवर ग्रोथ ऑफ दी बोन जो हमारा बोन होता है वो आपस में टकरा रहा है क्यों क्योंकि देखिए आप नेक्स्ट स्टेज में देखेंगे आप आपको क्लियर दिखाई देगा कि साइनेबल फ्लिट पूरा 
चला गया सॉरी कार्टिलेज तो यहाँ से पूरा चला गया साफ हो गया क्यों क्योंकि आप उस पर लगातार वेट गरिंग कर रहे हैं उसमें डैमेज करते जा रहे हैं और आपका जो बोन होता है वो फ्रिक्शन करता है आपस में टकराता है क्योंकि ज्वाइंट स्पेस रिड्यूस हुआ जब ज्वाइंट स्पेस रिड्यूस होता है बोन आपस में टकराता है तो बोन के छोटे छोटे से फ्रेगमेंट से पार्टिकल्स निकल जाते हैं जिसको हम ऑस्ट्रोफाइट बोलते हैं तो ऑस्ट्रोफाइट जाके जहाँ भी जाके टूटता है झड़ता है चिपक जाता है अटैच हो जाता है वो हमको हड्डी बड़ी हुई ओवर ग्रोथ के फॉर्म में नजर आता है जिसको नॉर्मली बोला जाता है हड्डी बढ़ गया है लेकिन ऐसा नहीं होता हड्डी नहीं बढ़ता है जो आपका बोन क्रैक्स हुआ डैमेज हुआ आपस में जैसा टकराया उसको ऑस्ट्रोफाइट बन जाते हैं और चिपक जाते हैं वो हमको ओवर ग्रोथ के फॉर्म में नजर आते हैं नेक्स्ट इज अभी आप देखिए फिफ्थ स्टेज में बिल्कुल ज्वाइंट स्पेस रिड्यूस हो चुका है साइनोबल फ्लूड भी लीक कर गया लोग कहते हैं ना कि सूजन आ गया है बिल्कुल ऑब्वियस बात है सूजन भी आएगा स्वेलिंग आपको दिखाई देगा पेन भी होगा ज्वाइंट स्पेस रिड्यूस हो गया और मूवमेंट आपका बहुत ज्यादा डिफरेंट टिपिकल हो जाता है इसमें नेक्स्ट इज नाउ लो बैक एक लो बैक एक इन यंग एथलीट कॉमन प्रॉब्लम सबसे ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम सबसे ज्यादा परेशानी इसी चीज से होती है पहले मैं आपको कुछ स्ट्रक्चर दिखा देता हूँ जैसे आप हेल्दी ज्वाइंट किस तरीके का देखने को मिलता है आपका स्पाइन में कॉमनली जो बैक में पेन आता है लो बैक की जाता है उसमें किस तरह के चेंजेस आते हैं जो आप सामने इमेज जो देख रहे हैं इसमें स्पाइनल कॉर्ड वर्टिकल नर्व स्पाइन इंटरवर्टिकल डिस्क ले सब इंटैक्ट है सब बहुत हेल्दी कंडीशन में है एक इसका आप एक व्यू और दे सकते हैं आपका ये आपके बीच में जो आप लिटिल बिट जो ग्रेश कलर का लाइट ग्रेश कलर का देख रहे हैं वो आपका डिस्क है और जो आपका पीछे की तरफ येलो कलर का है वो आपका स्पाइनल कॉर्ड जा रहा है उससे जो येलो कलर की जो अराइजिंग वो नर्व आपके निकल के जा रहे हैं राइट तो कॉमनली जो प्रॉब्लम हमने देखा है वियर एंड टीयर चाहे वो नी जॉइंट में हो बैक में हो तो नॉर्मल वियर एंड टीयर ओवर अ टाइम कैन कॉज इज वन ऑफ द डिस्क इन यूर स्पाइन टू रक्चर जैसे हम वियर एंड टीयर करते हैं मूवमेंट करते हैं हमारा जो स्पाइन का जो डिस्क होता है वो रक्चर हो जाता है डिस्क रक्चर होने से वो हर्नीट करके बाहर निकल आता है राइट तो जैसे वो बाहर निकल के आएगा तो इस कंडीशन को नॉर्मली स्लिप डिस्क के फॉर्म में भी लोग कहते हैं राइट डिस्क बल्ज करा कंप्रेस किया बाहर निकल के आया जो भी नर्व जा रही होगी जिस लेवल का वो होगा मान लीजिए एल फोर एल फाइव कॉमनली एल फोर एल फाइव एल फाइव एस वन का जो होता है डिस्क बल्ब हमने स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन में देखा है तो उस लेवल का नर्व कंप्रेस होगा तो उसी हिसाब से सिम्टम आएंगे अगर एल फोर एल फाइव है या एल फाइव एस वन का सिम्टम है तो आपके ग्रेट टो तक पेन आता है एल फोर एल फाइव का है तो आपके साफ फसल तक पेन आएगा तो जिस हिसाब से आपका नर्व का कंप्रेशन होगा जहाँ पर उस हिसाब का पेन आना स्टार्ट हो जाता है एंड कॉमनली इस पेन को हम लोग शार्टिक पेन या शाइटेगा के नाम से जानते हैं जो कि पेन आपके लोअर बटक में बैक में और लेग्स में ट्रैवल करता है ये इमेज आप देखिए दोबारा से नॉर्मल डिस्क एंड बल्ज डिस्क देर इज अ डिफरेंस नॉर्मल डिस्क एंड बल्जिंग डिस्क डिस्क जैसे कंप्रेस हुआ बल्ज करके बाहर निकल के आया अब थर्ड वन इज हर्नीटेड डिस्क हर्नीशन में क्या होता है कि जो डिस्क का मटेरियल होता है वो निकल के बल्जिंग में थोड़ा सा बाहर आता है हर्नीशन में ज्यादा आता है क्या चेंजेस आते हैं मैं आपको नेक्स्ट इमेज फिर दिखाऊंगा इसके बाद आपने देखा डिस्क जो डिजेनरेट हो जाती है वो कैसे देखने को मिलती है और कई बार ऐसा भी होता है कि डिस्क जो होती है वो थिन भी हो जाती है उसका जो मटेरियल होता है वो ड्राई कर जाता है तो डिस्क की थिनिंग भी हो जाती है डिस्क की आप देख सकते हैं डिस्क बल्ज करता है किस तरीके से वो नर्व को आपके इम्पिंच करता नर्व को आपको इरीटेट करता टच करता है नॉर्मल आप ऊपर देख सकते हैं फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड दो वर्टिब्रल कॉलम के बीच में जो डिस्क है इसमें से नर्व नहीं टच कर रहा है राइट क्यों क्योंकि उसमें बल्जिंग नहीं हुआ थर्ड वन जो आप देख रहे हैं जैसे कंप्रेशन आता है किसी भी तरह का तो डिस्क बल्ज करके बाहर निकल आता है और नर्व को इरीटेट करना स्टार्ट कर देता है ये आप दोबारा से व्यू और देख सकते हैं जिसमें कि नर्व से जो डिस्क जो बल्ज किया वो नर्व को किस तरीके से टच कर रहा है आप देखिए समझिए द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ शार्टिक इज अ बल्जिंग डिस्क और हर्नीशन ऑफ द डिस्क बल्जिंग डिस्क आप देख सकते हैं ये कॉमन नर्व है शार्टिक नर्व है इसका रेफर्ड पेन आप देख सकते हैं एरिया ऑफ पेन जो आप देख रहे हैं रेड कलर का पूरा एरिया में आपको पेन की फीलिंग आती है जब शार्टिक नर्व कंप्रेस होता है अभी देखिए बेसिकली क्या हो रहा है डिस्क डिजेनरेशन डिस्क प्रोलैप्स 
एक्सक्रीशन एंड सिक्सिक्रेशन चार स्टेजेस में आपके डिस्क में हाइड्रेशन होता है पहला हो डिजेनरेशन क्लियर है आपको उससे इमेज से आपको समझ में आ रहा हो कि डिस्क का जो न्यूक्लियस है न्यूक्लियस पल प्रोसेस है या सेंट्रल मास जो रहता है सेंट्रल में जो रहता है वो निकल के अपनी कैविटी से बाहर आया राइट सेकेंड फिर वो प्रोलेप्स करा ज्यादा पहले डिजेनरेट हुआ सेकेंड प्रोलेप्स हुआ फिर उसने फिर कैविटी को रिंग को ब्रेक डाउन करके बाहर निकल के आ गया एंड सिक्रेशन वो लीक करके आपकी कॉर्ड में चला गया और हमेशा के लिए जो कंप्रेशर बन के रह जाता है नाउ ये सब तो हो गया कि इंजरी के बारे में कि प्रिवेंशन क्या होना चाहिए हाउ टू प्रिवेंट दीज इंजरीज सारे इंजरी समझ में आता है हमको स्प्रेन क्या होता है स्ट्रेन क्या होता है ठीक है शिन पेन क्या होता है कैसे हमको नी का इंजरी होता है नी में कौन कौन सा होता है क्या चेंजेस आते हैं वीयर एंड टीयर के लो बैक में क्या होता है क्या क्या चेंजेस आते हैं लो बैक के लिए इस तरीके से हमारी बल्जिंग होती है डिस्क की जो कि हमारे नर्व को इरीटेट करती है और हमारे लेग में पेन आना स्टार्ट हो जाता है कोई भी ऐसी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी टू स्टिंग डिपॉर्मेंट कोर्स हम लगाते हैं तो हमारे पेन आना स्टार्ट हो जाते हैं लेकिन अब बात करते हैं हाउ टू प्रिवेंट दिस इंजरीज एज विद और फिजिकल एक्टिविटी यू मस्ट डू अ कंप्लीट वार्म अप एंड कूल डाउन वार्म अप एंड कूल डाउन इज मस्ट फॉर प्रिवेंटिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ स्पोर्ट्स इंजरीज स्ट्रेचिंग प्री एंड पोस्ट प्री इवेंट एंड पोस्ट इवेंट should be done every day if possible right soft tissue injury do not fall into life threatening category but but correct first aid procedure is required okay now what is the correct first aid procedure the police protocol normally the police principle may be the uh, new way for uh, a sports person नॉर्मली uh, हम लोग uh, देखते हैं कि फिजियोथेरापिस्ट एज वेल एज एथलेटिक ट्रेनर डॉक्टर स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन स्पेशलिस्ट हैव रेकमेंडेड द राइस प्रिंसिपल टू मैनेज एक्यूट इंजरीज राइट रेस्ट आर फॉर रेस्ट आई फॉर आई सी फॉर कंप्रेशन एंड एलिवेशन ऑफ द जॉइंट बट इफ यू हैव सफर्ड एन इंजरी लाइक अ स्प्रेन एंकल योर हेल्थ केयर प्रैक्टिशनर विल लाइकली रिकमेंडेड ट्रीटिंग इट इनिशियली यूरिंग द राइस बट uh first you have take rest the injured area take rest the injured area then apply ice to your injury using sometimes you have using the compression bandage and elevating or elevating your injured body part uh, though the process behind this is that the initial days following injury your body bring a lot of blood and fluid to the injured side to prevent it for to prepare it for healing okay jab injury hota hai to hamara basic aim kya hai ki bhai jo injured area hai usko hum log theek karna chahte hain right to jo hamare self healing process hoti hai uska ek kaam hota hai ki jaise injured injury ho gaya wahan pe blood ka circulation improve karna taki wo healing ke liye side ko prepare kar pae and this your body brings too much fluid to the injured area okay so the excessive fluid limits the range of motion jaise hi wahan pe excessive fluid jata hai to range of motion aapka restricted ho jata hai swelling ho jata hai to aapka movement restricted ho jata hai aapke joint ka range of motion decrease hone lagta hai and this can actually delays your healing when jab bhi aapka injury hota hai आपके बॉडी फ्लूड वहां पर जाके इकट्ठा होने लगता है क्योंकि उसको हीलिंग करना है वहां पर ब्लड का फ्लो बढ़ा देता है साइड को हीलिंग के लिए तैयार करना ये हमारे बॉडी का नेचुरल हीलिंग प्रोसेस है तो जैसे ही हमारा बॉडी का जो इंजरी को हीलिंग करने का प्रोसेस स्टार्ट हो जाता है तो वहां पर एक्सेसिव फ्लूड इकट्ठा होने लगता है तो हमारे रेंज ऑफ मोशन को रिस्ट्रिक्टेड करता है और यही कारण है कि हमारा हीलिंग डिले होना लगता है राइट सो लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ इमोबिलाईजेशन कई लोग कर देते हैं कई लोग भाई पेन हो रहा है नहीं मूवमेंट नहीं कर पाऊंगा तो हम लोग ज्यादातर क्या यूज करते हैं कि बोले भाई रेस्ट दे दो रेस्ट दे दो रेस्ट दे दो बट ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ इमोबिलाईजेशन का लीड टू डिक्रीजिंग दी मसल स्ट्रेंथ एंड फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी राइट सो द राइस टेक्निक मेक सेंस देयर एंड देयर आर अ कपल प्रॉब्लम विद इट फर्स्ट इट हैजन रियली बीन प्रोवेन टू वर्क लाइक वी थिंक इट वर्क मतलब मुझे नहीं लगता कई बार मैंने ऐसा सोचा है कि भाई राइस करें तो ज्यादा बेनिफिट मिलेगा लेकिन जो 
टाइम के हिसाब से थोड़ा मॉडिफिकेशन करना होता है तो पुलिस प्रोटोकॉल का ज्यादा भी यूज किया जा सकता है बहुत ज्यादा डिफरेंस नहीं है सिर्फ पी फॉर पी स्टैंड फॉर इनिशियल हम लोग प्रोटेक्शन की बात करते हैं तो सेम हेयर प्रोटेक्शन यहाँ भी है बट ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट फ्यू आवर आफ्टर इंजरी यू शुड सर्टेनली रेस्ट द इंजर्ड ज्वाइंट लेगामेंट और मसल राइट आफ्टर अ फ्यू डेज जेंटल मोशन कैन बी स्टार्टेड वाइल यू स्टिल मेंटेन अ लेवल ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन हमको लेवल ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन को मेंटेन करके रखना चाहिए ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम You may require some sort of assisted devices like crutches or uh, whatever you have. उनको use किया जा सकता है. Then after optimum loading, optimum loading, while you are protecting your injured body part, gentle motion can and should be started. So gentle motion can and should be started. For example, after a shoulder injury or shoulder surgery. You should should be able to progress from a few day rest to passive movement, then active movement, and finally the standing of the rotator cuff muscle, rotator cuff, right? So initially protection, then after optimal loading, then same application of the ice. Icing apply applying icing may help to manage the swelling of your joint. And you know how to apply the ice. अच्छा normally क्या होता है कि icing का भी concept बड़ा लोग गलत का यूज करते हैं जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल मैंने कई बार देखा कि मैंने बोला कि आइसिंग करना है आपको जाके तो पेशेंट ने जितना भी आइस पार्ट है उसके पास मिला उसको मान लीजिए फॉर एग्जांपल जैसे आइस लिया उन्होंने आइस की चार पांच क्यूब इकट्ठा लिया और उसको आइस क्यूब को डायरेक्टली बॉडी पार्ट पर लगा देते बिल्कुल गलत कभी भी हमको आइस को डायरेक्टली बॉडी पार्ट पर अप्लाई नहीं करना चाहिए हमेशा कोई ना कोई मीडियम उसके बीच में रहना चाहिए जैसे हम जल गर्म से जलते हैं वैसे ही ठंडे से भी आइस से भी बर्न हो जाता है तो हमेशा हमको इस बात का ध्यान रखना चाहिए कि इंजर्ड एरिया और आइस के बीच एक लेयर होना चाहिए चाहे आप पॉलीथिन में रख के यूज करिए चाहे कॉटन में रखिए या कोई भी क्लॉथ वगैरह उसको यूज करना चाहिए कभी वो आइस को डायरेक्टली अप्लाई नहीं करना चाहिए थर्ड वन इज कंप्रेशन कंप्रेशन विद द हेल्प ऑफ कंप्रेशन बैंडेज और यू कैन यूज कंप्रेशन ओल्ड कंप्रेशन लाइक ऐसा भी कर सकते हैं कंप्रेशन बैंडेज को लेके आइस चिल्ड वाटर में डिप किया उसको रैप कर लिया एंड नेक्स्ट इज एलिवेशन एलिवेशन ऑफ द ज्वाइंट सिंपली यू नो एलिवेट करके रखने से वो हमारा जो पार्ट होता है वो ऊपर रहेगा तो अच्छे से उसका प्योरिफिकेशन होगा हार्ट की तरफ ब्लड कम प्रॉपर करेगा तो हमारा जल्दी से जल्दी वो प्योरीफाइड हो जाएगा कई बार हमने ऐसे भी देखा एंकल इंजरी हो जाता है तो हम लोग स्टैक ऑफ पिलो को भी यूज कर सकते हैं राइट नेक्स्ट इज स्पोर्ट्स इंजरीज अभी ये तो हो गया बेसिक फर्स्ट एड मैनेज पुलिस प्रोटोकॉल की प्रोटेक्ट करना है ऑप्टिमल लोडिंग है आइस है कंप्रेशन है एलिवेशन है बट समटाइम्स क्या होता है कि आप ऑन ग्राउंड क्या मैनेजमेंट कर सकते हैं जैसे कि फॉर एग्जांपल फील्ड में फुटबॉल या रग्बी या कोई ऐसा कोई गेम चल रहा है राइट और अचानक से प्लेयर आपस में कॉन्टैक्ट इंजरी हो जाता है और प्लेयर गिर जाते हैं तो दैट इज दी डेंजर रिस्पॉन्स फॉर यू ये अभी जो मैं आपको बात बता रहा हूँ ये सभी के लिए एप्लीकेबल है जो भी ऑन ग्राउंड रहता है फील्ड में रहते हैं चाहे वो ट्रेनर हो चाहे वो कोचेस हो कोई भी हो कि जब भी आप ग्राउंड में हैं और कोलिजन हो जाता है दो प्लेयर्स के बीच तो दैट इज दी डेंजर रिस्पॉन्स फॉर अस सो हमको सबसे पहले क्या करना होता है ए करना होता है हमको डॉक्टर ए का हमको फॉलो करना होता है डेंजर रिस्पॉन्स जैसे ही आपको देखने को मिला सबसे पहले हमको एयरवे क्लीन करना है नॉर्मली क्या होता है कि इंजरी होने के बाद जैसे इंजर्ड हुआ तो लोग उसको घेर के खड़े हो जाते हैं प्लेयर को भाई क्या प्रॉब्लम है क्या हुआ तो कभी भी ऐसा नहीं करना चाहिए हमको उसका एयर को क्लीन करना चाहिए देख लेना चाहिए उसको प्रॉपर एयर आ रहा है कि नहीं आ रहा सेकेंड अब इंजरी हो गया पेंट हो गया पार्टिसिपेंट या प्लेयर या आपका स्टूडेंट गिर गया तो हमको क्या करना है भाई उसका एयर वे क्लीन करना है ब्रीदिंग को चेक करना है लोग नॉर्मली क्या करते हैं कि फेंट होकर गिरने के बाद तुरंत उसको शिफ्टिंग स्टार्ट कर देते हैं नहीं करना चाहिए सबसे पहले उसका एयर वे क्लीन कीजिए ब्रीथिंग चेक करें ब्रीथिंग चेक करने का बहुत सिंपल तरीका है नोस्टल्स के पास अपने दो फिंगर को रखिए या फिर हम चेस्ट के सॉरी चेस्ट के अप एंड डाउन से भी पता कर सकते हैं कि वो ब्रीथिंग प्रॉपर हो रहा है नहीं हो रहा है थर्ड वन इज टू चेक दी सर्कुलेशन सर्कुलेशन चेक करने के लिए कॉमनली है हम कैरोटेड आर्टरी पे जो हमारे रहता है नेक पे वहाँ पर हाथ रखते हैं तो उससे हम सर्कुलेशन को चेक कर सकते हैं अगर आपको डेंजर रिस्पॉन्स और ए बी सी ओके है 
तो फर्दर आप आगे बढ़ेंगे अगर अदरवाइज नहीं है कोलिजन ज्यादा है तो हमको इमरजेंसी कॉल करके वन जीरो पे कॉल करिए और अपने जो स्टूडेंट टेस्ट को शिफ्ट कर देना चाहिए किसी भी तरह के और टेस्ट को अप्लाई नहीं करना चाहिए क्योंकि ऑन ग्राउंड जब भी ये होता है कोलिजन हो जाता है लोग क्या करते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्पाइनल कॉड इंजरी हो गया कभी हेड इंजरी हो गया अब आप उसके एयर में ब्रीदिंग सर्कुलेशन चेक करा राइट और वो उसका प्रॉपर है तो ठीक है आगे बढ़ जाइए फिर आपको उससे बात करना है सारे प्रोटेप्स एग्जाम को फॉलो करना है अगर वो प्रॉपर रिस्पॉन्स नहीं कर पा रहा है देन उसको कैजुअलिटी में वन जीरो एट कर कॉल करके शिफ्ट कर देना चाहिए अब यहाँ तक ठीक है कि डेंजर रिस्पॉन्स आपने देखा ए बी सी ओके देन लोग क्या करते हैं कहाँ इंजरी हुआ उस बॉडी पार्ट को तुरंत उन्होंने मोबिलाइज कर दिया उसको शिफ्ट कर दिया कभी नहीं करना चाहिए ऐसा करने से इंजुरी और भी ज्यादा वर्स कंडीशन में जा सकता है राइट तो उनको क्या करना होता है सबसे पहले आप उस प्लेयर से बात करिए उससे बात करेंगे और उसके फेशियल एक्सप्रेशन को ऑब्जर्व करिए फॉर एग्जांपल प्लेयर का नाम मान लीजिए रमेश है हेलो रमेश हाउ आर यू तो जैसे ही आप उसको कॉल करेंगे उससे बात करेंगे उसका नाम पुकारेंगे और इसी बात है उसको आँख खोल के देखना चाहिए आँख खोल के देखेंगे या वो नहीं देख रहा है तो आपको इसी चीज को ऑब्जर्व करना है कि वो आप वो रिस्पॉन्स कर रहा है कि नहीं कर रहा है अच्छा ओके है सर उसने बोला हाँ सर आई एम ओके तो उसको पूछना है भाई क्या हुआ तो बताएगा सर मुझे इंजरी हुआ है तो कहाँ इंजरी हुआ है राइट पैर में लेफ्ट पैर में स्पाइन में कहाँ पे इंजरी हुआ है फॉर एग्जांपल मान लीजिए उसको लिम में इंजरी नी में या एंकल ट्विस्ट हो गया ठीक है तो हमको उसको पूछना है कि आप किस बॉडी पार्ट में हुआ राइट में लेफ्ट में तो कन्फ्यूज तो नहीं है राइट एंड लेफ्ट में अगर बता रहा सर मुझे राइट एंकल में ट्विस्ट हुआ है तो आपको उसको पहले टच करके देखना है या नी में इंजरी हुआ है तो पहले उस पार्ट को आप टच करके देखिए कि कहाँ पेन आ रहा है राइट में है लेफ्ट में है तो वो बता पा रहा है हाँ सर मुझे राइट में पेन आ रहा है ओके देन क्या तुम अपने उस पार्ट को मूव कर सकते हो यानी एक्टिव मूवमेंट अभी आपको मूवमेंट नहीं करना है अगर आप अभी जब तक आपका प्लेयर या आपका स्टूडेंट खुद से या आप खुद मूवमेंट नहीं कर पा रहा आपने उससे बोला कैन यू मूव योर लेम आप बोले यस सर आई कैन मूव अगर मूव कर पा रहा है ओके देन आप पैसे मूवमेंट कर सकते हैं राइट एक्टिव मूवमेंट करने के बाद पैसेवली आपको मूवमेंट करके चेक करना है कि हाँ वो ओके है अगर ओके है तो उसको शिफ्ट कर दीजिए एंड जो थर्ड वन है स्किल टेस्ट है अगर यू नो हाउ टू परफॉर्म दी स्किल और स्पेसिफिक टेस्ट फॉर दी इंजर्ड एरिया लाइक एंटीरियर टी शर्ट लेगामेंट के लिए एंटीरियर डॉट टेस्ट है पोस्टीरियर के लिए अलग अलग टेस्ट हैं अगर आप इस तरह के टेस्ट को परफॉर्म करना जानते हैं या आपके फिजियो है आपकी टीम के साथ तो डेफिनेटली आप इस तरह के स्किल टेस्ट का भी यूज कर सकते हैं तो डॉक्टर ए बी सी डेंजर रिस्पॉन्स है तो एयर ब्रीदिंग सर्कुलेशन चेक करिए हाँ अब ए बी सी अगर उसका परफेक्ट नहीं है कहीं कोई इश्यूज आ रहे हैं और आप में से कोई या आप ट्रेन है बी में या सी ट्रेनर हैं या सी की आपको ट्रेनिंग है तो पहला रूल यही कहता है कि हमको जैसे ही ए बी सी करेक्ट नहीं है तो हमको उसको स्टार्ट सी पी आर सी स्टार्ट कर देना चाहिए क्योंकि एयरवे आपने कर दिया ब्रीदिंग वो नहीं कर पा रहा है सर्कुलेशन उसका प्रॉपर नहीं है तो ऐसा भी होता है क्योंकि जैसे लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस रनिंग होती है इसमें कई बार हमने सी दिया भी है पार्टिसिपेंट को तो क्योंकि वो लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस रनिंग करके आ रहे हैं अचानक पेंट होकर गिर गए तो ब्रीदिंग नहीं कर पा रहे हैं प्रॉपर तो उनको हमको सी देना पड़ता है तो सी देने का भी टेक्निक अगर आपको पता है जैसे वन चेस्ट कंप्रेशन देते हैं आपका सिक्सटी टू टू का तो उस तरह के चेस्ट कंप्रेशन वन ट्वेंटी का भी चेस्ट कंप्रेशन रहता है तो चेस्ट कंप्रेशन देना परमिट का और फिर टू रेस्ट की ब्रीथ देना इस तरह का एक प्रोटोकॉल रहता है प्रॉपर अगर फ्यू लू देन आप अप्लाई करिए और अगर नहीं तो किसी भी मेडिकल टीम को बुला के उसकी हेल्प करने के लिए आगे बढ़ा देना चाहिए देन आफ्टर अगर आपका पेशेंट या आपका पार्टिसिपेंट ओके है तो टॉक ऑब्जर्व टॉक करो ऑब्जर्व करो उसको टच करके देखो उसके एक्टिव मूवमेंट कराना है फिर पैसे मूवमेंट करना है फिर उसके स्किल टेस्ट कर सकते हैं उसको शिफ्ट करना चाहिए ये सारे प्रोसेस को अप्लाई करना चाहिए थैंक यू वेरी मच हेलो थैंक यू थैंक यू सर 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 हेलो 
Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Jain, sir. Sir. Uh, we will ask you a question in the next session. Ah, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. The information you have shared, sir, about some basic injuries, their symptoms, their causes, and most uh, important is that the emergency treatments for accurate injuries. And thanks for guiding us how to cope up with emergency situations on the fields and the measures to be taken while treating that injured persons. So thank you so much, sir. Now uh, we move to the third session on high altitude injuries and prevention. And for these sessions, we have with us Mr. Sibusi Suvilane, sir. And I request Professor uh, Manisha Wagmare, ma'am, to kindly introduce our speaker for the third session. Uh, Professor Manisha, ma'am. Thank you, Sharu. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to this third session of workshop. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce our renowned key speaker, Mr. Sibusisu Dhani. He is neither a mountaineer nor a climber, but he has been to the top of the Mount Everest twice from two different sites which makes him the first black person in the world to achieve this. He is not a polar explorer, yet he was one of the first two Africans to walk to the South Pole unsupported and unassisted. He has conquered Mount Kilimanjaro more than dozens of times. He is the first black person in the world to climb the seven highest mountains of each continent. After reaching the North Pole in April 2012, he became the first black person in the world to achieve the Grand Slam of adventuring. Known to same as the three poles, which are the summits of Mount Everest, the North Pole, and the South Pole. He is graduate of Life's Lesson, a university found on top of all mountains, big and small. After all these achievements, ladies and gentlemen, he still believes that there is no mountains too high and he knows no limits. He tackles great challenges with a positive Welcome, Mr. Subhu Sisu Vilani. Over to you, Sharu. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, may I request uh, Mr. Subhu Sisu Vilani, sir, to kindly address the gathering. Mr. Subhu uh, Sisu Vilani, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, thank you, Manisha, for that very in-depth introduction. I really appreciate that. And I would like to thank everyone that is listening from all corners of the world. Um, it is a wonderful opportunity and I appreciate your time. Um, I am going to repronounce my name for those that might still try and find it difficult to really say it. It is very simple. Uh, you read it as it is. It is Sibu Siso. And uh, Sibu Siso in biblical terms means blessing. Uh, it is a wonderful blessing that I'm talking to people. It is just in, in, in African language, uh, Zulu, which is my native language, which I speak. And if I would have greeted you in my language, I would have said Sanbonani, which means hello, everyone. So I might as well say that, um, Sanbonani. I am going to talk about high altitude mountaineering injuries and their prevention. But I must start by saying that I, I'm not the one that is going to be presenting on research. Um, I've not done any research work, so I'm not bringing in any scientific uh, data or any references when I'm talking to you. But what I'm going to use are my personal observations uh, because I've been climbing mountains for the last uh, 20 years and I have learned and observed what are the most things that injure people. Therefore, I'm going to purely speak on personal experiences. Um, but it is known, it is a known fact that when we go to the high mountains at high altitude, we go to a very high risk area. These are places that cause a lot of danger, but it requires us people who venture to go to those places to be aware of where we are going so that we can be able to minimize the injuries that are more likely to occur. But through my observations, I've realized that in most high altitude um, related injuries happens in, in two parts. 
you've got your general ones, the common ones, I'm sure the previous speakers have mentioned some of them, but I will also probably touch on them because they become universal. It doesn't matter what sport you are involved in, you are bound to be injured. There will be injuries. So the common ones that are very um, linked to mountaineering or high altitude climbing are injuries from falling. Falling causes a lot of injuries on a climber or on a high cast body and falling, falling off or falling off a cliff uh, or just by tripping and then falling or banging your head while you are you're falling, it, it causes a lot of injuries, some of which could be breaking your leg or injuring your arms or suffering bruises or a number of your, your body parts might be uh, lacerated because of the impact of your falling. And in most cases, it can probably lead to fatalities. Uh, let me use an example. If you were to lead, read about Everest and what are the very predominant um, accidents that happens on Mount Everest. I, I will use Everest because it is the only mountain that is highly documented. Um, I have been very fortunate to climb on other parts of the world and I have a very different opinion when it comes to uh, mount, mountain injuries. Uh, mountain injuries occur everywhere. But the reason I'm saying I'm referring to Everest because if you look at the data or the statistics of the, the, the number of deaths on Mount Everest, they will say that falling claims the highest percentage. So it does tell you that we fall more on mountains than anywhere else we will. As a result of it is important for us to get to know how do we then deal with uh, such situations to make sure that we walk down the mountain injury free. So what, what are the causes of falling off mountains? It, it comes in, in a variety of, of situations really. It can be as a result of surfaces where the, the hiker or the climber is walking at. Um, it could be either walking on very wet surfaces or snowy, uh, slippery grounds, steep gradients. And in most cases, it's because we tend to do things in a hurry. We want to rush things and most accidents, falling accidents happens when people rush, uh, rush about. So those are, the, those are the causes that will lead to a person getting injured. So it is very, safe climbing requires a lot of patience. Uh, but people tend to fall when they rush off the mountain and, and, and rush on difficulties. And again, referring to Everest, if you looked at it, the, you would find that the most accident happens on the way down. And you ask your question, but why does that happen and how does it happen? It happens purely because you feel that you have reached the summit of your mountain, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It is at high altitude. It, can't, it doesn't have to be Everest. But every now and then you climb up to the top of a mountain, you climbed very carefully and very slowly, and now you've succeeded or achieved what you had set out to achieve. So the energy rages up and then suddenly people start rushing down the mountain. And unfortunately, that is the most dangerous time to, to suffer an injury, a high altitude injury. So we need to learn not to rush after summit. You still have to make your way safely down. I think one climber put it, uh, he put it very nicely and very popular. He said, going to, the summit, going to the summit is optional, but then coming down safe is mandatory. And I think in the mountaineers or high altitude enthusiasts, it is very important for them to always bear in mind that it is, it is your responsibility to be able to, to deal with uh, injuries that you can prevent them. So the preventative measures of high altitude related injuries, in my opinion, and in, in my experience, it is purely on knowledge. I think most of us tend to find ourselves in the sport and we don't go deeper into having an in-depth knowledge of what is it that we are really going to contend with. And we don't have information about what is this mountain like and what are the dangers involved. Therefore, any preventative measure is to get as much knowledge and as much information and any person who wants to go to any wilderness area uh, should give enough time really in, in researching about the area, 
and try to get as much information about the difficulty of the event that you are doing, whether is it going to be just a normal stroll, uh, which you will call a normal day hike, or it is going to be a serious technical climbing. Because if you knew then, then you should be able to, to get the right equipment and the gear, the protective gear that will uh, prevent you from getting injur injuries. So gaining enough knowledge will then assist that person at high altitude to be able to go for the correct and appropriate clothing necessary to do it, and by so doing, um, preventing injuries. There are injuries that are related to high altitude, which I call impact injuries. Now, these are injuries that, uh, that occur, they're still part of the common ones, but the common ones that are head injuries. An impact injury, which is caused by falling hard on your head. If you trip and then you fall and you bang your head, you get injured. And that it is very severe if you fell on your face, really, because then you will walk up with gashing wounds. I will make an example as well. I'll share a short story. I had a friend, I was visiting a friend in England a few years ago, and he wanted to, to take a picture. And he took that photograph, but he realized that there was part of the area, the mountain that he wanted us to be on the frame. So he started moving back a little bit on a flat car park. And he went and then suddenly he wasn't looking down because he was focusing with his camera and then the next minute he was on the ground. So broke his nose, forehead gashed, and it was an injury. So wilderness areas are very tricky and that is what they do to us. So it's important for us to be aware of where we are and what happens uh, but the majority of head injuries are associated with, associated with high altitude are rock falls. Rock falls are very, very popular, very common because particularly after heavy rainfall, um, you are more likely to find a lot of rubble tumbling down the mountain. And as a preventative measure, that is the time you don't want to be on a mountain uh, after heavy rainfall because then there will be a very severe or very strong downflow of water and bringing it with it will be rocks that could just hit you on the head. And the rock falls are very common. And the other that are very popular with high altitude mountaineering are ice blocks falling. Um, talking of ice blocks, again, I will make the listeners or viewers uh, remember the, the incident on Everest in 2014 where a big ice block because I was at base camp. It was ended up being called an avalanche, but it was a big ice block that dislodged and then stripping down the mountain, which then obviously, unfortunately, led to uh, severe fatalities. So that was an injury caused by falling ice, but big blocks of ice. So the knowledge of what, what type of terrain that you are going to be doing your activity on helps you in such situations. Has it been snowing the last couple of days? Are there any chances that the ice might be collapsing or big ice blocks might be dislodging or even, even avalanche happening? So it helps. So to avoid such injuries, one has to get the knowledge um, how to do, how to be able to, to, to manipulate a situation where you walk down the mountain injury free. And the, the same applies to big mountains that are covered in snow, like in the Alps, like in the Himalayas. If you're going to climb at that, that part, you are more likely to have big uh, chunks of ice falling down. So you need to be very aware of where you are to avoid that. Cuts and bruises happens now. These are, they will happen quite, quite often really at high altitude uh, because we are dealing with very uh, rough terrain, rocky and you are more likely to get a bruise and a bruise at high altitude um, doesn't easily heal. If you are going to be there for some time, you will never recover from it. So it might start as a little small bruise, but then at the end of it, it becomes a severe wound that will might compel you to just have to vacate your expedition. And, and you need to be very aware of, of, of such that happen. And that they're also generally caused by uh, falling rocks and, and, and loose rocks and loose scree or slippery ground. And at high altitude, unfortunately, as I've said, these don't recover. Uh, I can make another example. I was climbing in North America a couple of years ago and I'd left home with a little ulcer just on the side of my mouth. And it was a tiny little pimple. 
and I got to over 5,000 meters. This thing got worse and worse, and it, it sort of puzzled me as to what was going on. But I, I didn't, I wasn't aware that as soon as you hit high altitude, and every little wound will never recover. Instead, it just gets worse. So I had walked in with this tiny pimple. By the time I walked off the mountain, there was this very big, scary looking wound. And people were asking, what, what, bit, you, what bit your lip? And it wasn't like I was bitten by something, but the, the wound or the injury just got worse and worse. So you need to try and avoid little cuttings or little scratches when you, you go to, to high altitude uh, climbing. So that, that's very, very important indeed. Now, prevention. Prevention of all the common injuries, I believe it, it starts with the person. It starts with the individual. Um, it is self-responsibility. In most cases, we tend to forget about ourselves, but just focus on the natural terrain that we fear, that we respect might injure us, and then forget that it is the actions that we do as an individual. So the very first best prevention of any injury in any sport, I think is just to know yourself and, and, and be self-responsible. Because if you're not responsible, then surely it is, then, then you will have, you'll, you'll definitely have an injury. Um, but then obviously, if you're not responsible and taking care of yourself, then unfortunately in high altitude, or every little injury will just debilitate. You need to be constantly aware of the risks in the area that you are going to take your events. You need to have very appropriate headwear, headgear. Um, when you go to high altitude, I've mentioned now several times that there is a possibility of a rock fall. There is a possibility of a, an ice fall or an ice collapse the best part you can protect is your head. And that can only be done by wearing a helmet. And I've seen most climbers really, they don't assess the condition beforehand and you will find them climbing at an area where they should have been wearing their helmet, but they are not simply because they have not looked at the information and they've not looked or assessed what the conditions on the mountains are and then they get injured on their head. So wear your helmet at all times, particularly when you are climbing at very steep and rocky sections where rocks or ice might just uh, dislodge unexpected. And being disciplined uh, to wear the gear that you've got because it is through lack of discipline. I've seen it um, where people will be climbing at places where they have the helmets, they have the, uh, the crampons to walk on the ice, to avoid them from slipping and falling over and getting injured, but that they lack the discipline to say, I need to do this, I need to be very proactive. So self-discipline is the key when you want to really avoid high altitude injuries. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it from experience. Um, I learned the lesson very early in my life that if I wasn't self-disciplined and if I wasn't looking after myself, I was going to lose digits uh, through injury and this would have been called injury and the, the story is uh, just to share it briefly is I had to walk up I woke up in the morning and I put my stuff in a little day pack and gloves and I felt that that morning it was warm for me to wear my biggest gloves so I opted for the little gloves um, but there was a stage because we're still climbing during the very early morning of, of, of the day uh, when it was still freezing cold so I suddenly felt that I wanted to put on another pair of gloves, but because I'd left the discipline and focus to orientate myself as I had, where had I put my other glove, I tried to dig into my little backpack to find the glove, but I couldn't. For a few minutes, uh, for a few seconds, I thought, well, I can take off my glove and then use my hand, my bare hand to look at it. And within 10 seconds, my whole hand had died completely. So I almost, got severe frostbite in my hand because of the lack of discipline. So self-discipline for me is a very, it's another one of those very important preventative measures when you are going to be climbing at high altitude and it will save you um, a long time. Another very common high altitude um, injury is sunburn injuries. Uh, the UV rays are very, very high, um, powerful at high altitude and it can cause a number of facial injuries like cracked lips and 
crack noses, which I have seen, and that will happen. So I'm not going to really go to say what causes it. It is just you exposing your facial um, uh, parts uh, to to the UV rays and and the glare from the ice that bounces onto your face is so severe, but we don't think of it in this way. And, and again, I will uh, use a very high mountain in this regard. Um, Manisha, if she would be, she would probably concur with me that between Camp 1 and, and Camp 2 on the Western Kum, on the Kumbu Icefall, you're walking between two mountain valleys. During the day, it is a furnace when you're walking up there, but you sit down, the temperatures are still minus whatever it is. So you, you, you bring the mentality that ah, I'm going to be walking on ice through the day, therefore I'm not going to protect my face because it is cold up there, but it is just the, the glare that bounces back onto your faces causing, causing those severe injuries. And within a week, uh, most of the climbers on those mountains, you can just see them, uh, cracked leaves, the skin is peeling off. And it, is, it can be a very serious injury because if that happens, uh, then, it reduces the capacity of your skin to withstand frostbite. So it means that once you have exposed your face to, to, sun, uh, to sunburn, then you are more susceptible to frostbite. So your nose is more susceptible to frostbite. So you need to prevent, avoid that happening uh, from you. So how do you do that? Preventative measures, covering up your face and using a high factor sunscreen or sun cream all the time. No shortcut on this one. You do want to, to do that. Injuries of lower extremities, I'm talking now about your legs at, at high altitudes, mainly your feet and your legs. Um, the very common ones, which are also in every other sp sport, I mentioned them because they're more likely to happen on high altitude climbing, your ankle injuries where you twist your ankle and in, you fracture or you sprain it, you sprain your foot. All these are very severe injuries that anyone that ventures into high altitude needs to, to be aware of and they need to be very prepared and they need to promise themselves that it won't just happen. If it is an accident, it is an accident, but these are things that normally happen because people do things haphazardly without paying much focus, what the terrain is like, and in most cases, they are not even wearing the proper hiking gear. So what causes uh, these injuries? It's mainly walking on surfaces, uh, wearing wrong footwear and on rocky areas and overexertion. You really, you're just pushing yourself or you're carrying a heavy backpack, your, your legs are carrying your body and it gets to a stage where they can't be able to do that. Prevention of your lower extremities, injuries at high altitude, is just being mindful of where you are headed. Where, where are you going? Where are you going on your climbing adventure? And invest in the proper hiking or climbing gear and the shoes. The use of hiking poles to aid your balance must be, must be, some, might be something that my people might think about or consider. They have saved me a lot and as such prevented uh, me to have probably having had the possibility of falling off a cliff to or severe injury because I've, I've slipped and fell. But because I use my trekking poles doesn't matter how easy the terrain or how flat the terrain is that I'm walking on. I'm always very mindful of that. But then the second phase of, the, of my high altitude um, climbing injuries will be one that is very well known to mountaineers. And I call them a mountaineer's nightmare because personally I would rather help or suffer which I don't want to, I'd rather suffer all the injuries that are there than this one. And this one is the one that haunts me when I go to expeditions on high altitude. And it is frostbite. Frostbite is very prevalent, doesn't matter where you go and what causes frostbite. It is caused, it occurs when the skin and underlying tissues freeze. The most common causes of frostbite is exposure to cold, mainly cold weather, and it could, but it can also be caused, which we tend to forgive, it could be just direct contact with ice. Um, I think when we go out to the outdoors, we become like children, we want to play, but you need to be very aware that if you touch ice, you are running the risk of getting frostbite, 
or even frozen metal or very cold liquids. So it's good to know where these come from. And particularly if you are at, uh, at, at a camp at high altitude and you need to be very careful of um, what you are doing because liquids can also cause frostbite. And it ha frostbite happens in three stages, which I have found because for many, many years, uh, when giving lectures here at home, the first question that uh, come up from audiences is that, have you ever had frostbite? And I will always proudly pull up my, my digits and I still say, I can still count to 10 by pointing at each one of them. And they will say, what about your toes? And I say exactly the same, they are still as inter. And I say, then I share a story with them. A very, very similar story I shared earlier. That from that early stages, I learned that it was my responsibility. And the, I learned that because I had thought for many years that I didn't know much about frostbite. So I thought frostbite happens after a very prolonged time of exposure to cold conditions. So that's why I would be playing things very late and saying, oh, it will only take me half a second to do the zip. It will take me half a second to take off a pack. So therefore let me use my, my hands as they are without having protective wear on them clouds. But I realized then one day that it takes you just less than half a second for you to get frostbite. So when I, when I, when I, when I observed that or noticed that, then I said, okay, there's no way I am going to play it lax because that is what happens. So I've always denied when I was asked, have you ever had frostbite? But because I didn't know how it happens, I thought frostbite was a, say, a, a, a situation where your, the, your, your hands just dries or they die and they fall off or they get heck, chopped off because you've exposed them terribly to severe conditions, but no. So that's why I wanted to share with, with everyone listening, what are the stages uh, of frostbite? Because I've had frostbite, but I've never had it in its severity. So they come, in, they come in, in three stages. Stage number one is frost nip. Frost nip is, you notice the symptoms noticeable at that is that you see the effect. The affected skin is red or pale white, and the skin may also feel cold, numb, or tingle. So the frost nip is the warning stage um, when skin damage is still just temporarily. So I've had those because after about a week of having exposed my, my fingers to those conditions, the top half of my fingers started peeling off and that there was a sign that it was almost severe, but I was lucky to escape without that. So those are the first when it comes to frost nip. Um, but then how do you treat those immediately if you see those symptoms the best way is just to get inside. If you are outside, get inside your tent and then you treat with warm water, never cold water, just warm water. That's where you, you plunge your fingers or your hand or your wash or your feet because frostbite um, affects uh, bodies of our parts being your face, your nose, your ears uh, that are exposed and your hands, your fingers, and then down to your feet being your toes as well. So when we see there is get inside and then you treat them with water. There's what I call a surface or superficial frostbite. This is the second stage of frostbite where you, your skin might feel warm, but the water in your skin is slowly freezing into ice crystals. Your skin may also sting, which means you will feel this stinging sensation and it will start swelling. And after rewarming, you might see mottled patches or purple or blue areas that hurt or burn, just like a bruise. Your red skin might start, start peeling off. And if that happens, that shows you, you need, if that happens really, you need medical attention. Um, they, if you were on the mountain, you just need to get out of there and just go to get treatment. You might also get fluid filled blisters in the area after a day or two. That is another sign that you are getting, uh, getting it worse. So it might just get worse if you stayed on the mountain, as I mentioned. These things don't recover when you are still at the elevation uh, at high altitude. From 4,000 and above, you don't want to be there. And the third stage of, of your first bite, that is when then you definitely uh, get the severity. Because what happens with this one is your lower layers of the skin freeze. And, and, and total numbness in the area sets in, 
and you may be unable to move the area that frostbitten. I was walking in Antarctica a few years ago and I started the day beautifully and very well and going uh, progressively towards the South Pole. And at the one stage, I just felt that, okay, I needed to take something in my sled. I stopped, but I had put my little gloves, as you will be warned, they always say put gloves at your body temperature, it might help. So I had put mine in an open zip just in front of my chest and I went into my sled and pulled up the stuff I wanted to do. But when I got back, I had exposed this little glove at minus 27, uh, minus 27 degrees. So I took it and I slid it right into my hand and then my, the hand, my hand was just rock solid. It took me a hell of a long time to revive it. I was scared because I was with an expedition partner. I was even scared to tell him that, hey, I've got frostbite because I couldn't move any of my, my fingers. The whole hand was just rock solid. So that was a sign that I was getting frostbite. And, and luckily I had observed it quite early. So it took me a frantic two hours to revive it, just to bring back the circulation um, to, to that, those frostbitten parts. So I only survived it just by that. But if that happens, the only treatment of frostbite really is just getting medical attention immediately. Big blisters will appear on the frostbitten skin a day or two afterwards. And finally, the frostbitten skin turns black as it cells die from freezing. And this black skin might form a hot uh, black covering called carapace, and that falls off on its own, or otherwise it will usually need to be removed surgically. So, uh, well, that's tragic, really, if it happens. So, so for me, as a mountaineer, as a high altitude enthusiast, these are the, the ones that you need to be very aware of and pay much attention to. And if you notice any of these symptoms on the, on the second or third stages of frostbite, get uh, medical treatment immediately. Prevention. Prevention of high of frostbite it's again what I said, self-discipline. Don't be like me. Don't think that it will take you 10, 10 minutes to get frostbite and therefore you get tempted to take off your gloves and just to open a zip or get something to eat. You need to do that with your protective clothing, with your gloves in hand. That is the first measure of, um, of prevention. And stay safe and, and take simple precaution every time to prevent frostbite. But mainly dress code. I think a friend of mine said something when I was asked about frostbite. He had already got frostbite. And then when asked, how did it happen? He says, well, it, is, it wasn't the cold as per se, but it was inappropriate dress. You need to dress appropriately to avoid these injuries. Cold injuries are your worst on the mountain. And can imagine how it will feel if one got his, his fingers chopped off because of it. And layering, um, I think we need to know that you can never rely on the book about you need to wear two, two layers. It's a personal agenda. You need to be able to know if I've got two layers, do I feel warm or feel cold? But in most cases, if we are being guided or led, we leave it to the guide to say, oh, no, today it's looking perfect. You might as well walk on T-shirts. No, you must know that temperatures, uh, human beings' temperatures vary. Um, I feel much more colder than someone else will. So therefore, it becomes my responsibility. If I feel uncomfortable, I must just make sure I layer according to how I feel, not according to how, some, how someone else says I should, be, I should be layering. So that is a very important word. Uh, on your feet, always at high altitude, try as much to wear two pairs of socks, thick and a thin one. I prefer to use for my hands. I've always said on finger gloves, I feel cold. I use mittens or mitt. And the reason for that is I strongly believe that when your fingers are together, they are able to warm each other and therefore protect you from getting a cold injury. But if you use a finger glove, it separates them so they are living individually. And that makes it very easy for frostbite to, uh, to crop in. So I will highly suggest whatever else you do, do find yourself a nice pair of mittens. Take it in your bags if you don't feel like you want to use them. But if it gets to the severity of the temperatures,
then you need them and you wear them. And that way, that's probably why in 20 years of my mountaineering career, I still have got my digits. I've never been, I've never treated frostbite because I just took it up to me that uh, that is what I will do. I will use what works for me, gloves on a warmer day, but I've got my pair of mittens if, um, if, if it things go worse. So for, for your face, always cover. Nowadays, the popular thing is called buffs, but whatever scarf you have, because Frostbite will definitely go for your facial extremities, your nose, your, your ears, your cheeks, or your lips. So you need to cover up. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be visible on the mountain. Yeah, well, in, in fact, I think now in the days of COVID-19, we'll find that um, that's perfect because of social distancing. You don't have to show someone your smile that you are, you are there. So cover up. That's your best uh, protection for your face. Well, you need to keep your ears as well. Keep your ears covered. Um, don't cut off circulation. Now, this is for both your hands and your feet because it is when your, your shoes are tighter that the blood flow is now reduced or cut off. And if that happens, then your feet will be cold and then you will get frostbite. So try and avoid that. Make sure your boots and your clothes aren't too tight as this can cause very, very poor circulation and avoid cramping uh, stuff. Just you want to wear stuff very loose fitting um, when it comes to, to those. So for me, that is uh, what's very critical and important. Well, I know that most all of us, we love our mountains, um, but since we love our mountains, it is our responsibility to look after ourselves. And we are out there to make sure that we come back alive and injury free. And injury free is possible. It only takes discipline and it takes the consistency. So that is my contribution today when it comes to high altitude injuries and their prevention and I added what causes them. So I hope that you're finding this very helpful so that when you next venture onto your high altitude uh, terrain or high altitude ambition or event, you are well aware of what you must do, but it takes you as a person to deal with the situation. And these injuries can be avoided. It is not saying that they will not happen. I think we shouldn't forget that. Injuries will always happen because we are humans. And at times you just accidentally sleep, and then you bang the floor with your knee, and then you've, you've got a broken knee or a broken leg, you go. But it is just being very precautionary when it comes to us approaching the world that we love which are mountains and that don't I always say to to people to instill the discipline in them looking after themselves that the mountains are not dangerous we are dangerous so those of us who go to these mountains are the danger therefore we just need to look at ourselves and, uh, and just follow that well thank you very much indeed for your time and uh, for for listening so patiently thank you thank you very much sir Sharo. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your adventurous uh, experience and your guidance for us and discovering the areas of injuries in high altitude, especially. And the measures you have shared to be taken while climbing the mountain in different areas is are very beneficial to us. Thank you so much, Mr. Sibusi. So, sir, now moving towards our final session on role of kinesiology in avoiding sports injuries, we have with us Dr. Sh Dr. Shantunjay Kote, sir, and I request Dr. Madhav Singh Ingre, sir, to kindly introduce our speaker of this session. Uh, Dr. Madhav Singh Ingre, sir. Thank you, Shadow. Good afternoon, one and all, honorable to have virtual joy for this international workshop. I, Dr. Madhav Singh Ingle, is here to give you a brief introduction of today's research person, Principal Dr. Chaturunjay Kote. It's due pleasure to introduce Dr. Chaturunjay Kote, sir, present work as a principal at MSM College of Physical Education at Aurangabad. He has more than 10 years experience associate professor. He has worked as a gymnastic coach, Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra government, director of physical education in nine years, Somania College, Kopragao, 
स्पोर्ट्स पार्टिसिपेशन ट्वेल्व नेशनल जिम्नास्टिक थ्री ऑल इंडिया यूनिवर्सिटी इन जिम्नास्टिक सेवन मार्शल आर्ट नेशनल एंड टू गोल्ड मेडल्स ही हैज सक्सेसफुली कम्पीटेड एम आर पी फाइनेंस बाय यू जी सी न्यू दिल्ली ही हैज रिसर्च गाइड इन डॉक्टर बाबा साहब आंबेडकर मराठवा यूनिवर्सिटी एंड सोलापुर यूनिवर्सिटी सेवन स्टूडेंट हैव बीन अवॉर्डेड अंडर हिज एबल गाइडेंस ही हैज प्रेजेंट मोर देन नाइंटी वन रिसर्च पेपर इन वेरियस नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ही हैज मेंबर ऑफ सिलेबस कमिटी ही हैज ऑल्सो लाइफ मेंबर ऑफ वेरियस बॉडी आई वेलकम यू सर ऑन दिस ओकेजन फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर नाउ मे आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर शत्रुंजय कोटे सर टू काइंडली एड्रेस द गैदरिंग गुड आफ्टरनून वाम गुड आफ्टरनून टू वन एंड ऑल थैंक यू इंग्लिश सर फॉर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग मी एट द आउटसाइड आई वुड लाइक टू सर योर मोबाइल इज ऑन माय सर यस सर तो ये इको इज कमिंग सर now is it this uh, is it audible yes sir yes sir ah, fine uh, so first of all uh, let me uh, wish you all a very happy and healthy uh, national sports day which is scheduled tomorrow actually uh, in memory of the indian hockey legend uh, major dhyan chand and i uh, thank all the uh, organizers online international workshop on sports injuries and prevention and also all the six colleges their principals and the program coordinators the, uh, who have given me this opportunity to have a dialogue with you all uh, my today's uh, topic is uh, i would like to share my screen is it possible yes sir thank you sir i'll be talking on the role of kinesiology role of kinesiology in avoiding sports injuries uh, first of all let me say that uh, prevention is always better sir, than you can share you can share your ppt sir yeah is it visible is it visible sir Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Is it visible? It yeah. is visible. What is the role of kinesiology in avoiding sports injuries? Uh, till now, we have been seeing that uh, types of injuries and uh, prevention of injuries. But let me first tell you that all prevention is always better than cure. If you know uh, somebody is issued the license of driving a motor vehicle uh, or a motor bike only when you know certain things about the motor bike, isn't it? Uh, be, otherwise, uh, in many countries, uh, your license will not be issued uh, for your uh, driving itself. So, when you are into the sports and physical education profession, first of all, uh, I think we should know very seriously about how our body works, isn't it? So, kinesiology uh, plays a very major role in this, and. Uh, the thing is that what kinesiology says it's uh, about the science and science of human motion now kinesiologists those who discourse on anatomy that is structure of the body and physiology the functions of the body in effect combine to form kinesiology the science of movement with application of few bio, uh, biomechanicals uh, biomechanical laws so uh, i'll be having my key points at joints and fundamental movements then muscles uh, involved in that then planes and axis posture and postural deformity first of all let us have a very broad perspective about knowing what is our skeletal system the skeletal system which gives the support to the body it is a source of rich sources of your minerals and like calcium phosphorus and all these things it is also a site to produce a factory what we will say it's a factory to produce red blood cells it also gives structure to the body and it also supports all the alignment of the body hence we should know something or uh, the latest things about uh, the sports and physical education teacher should know about the skeletal system 
the skeletal system is made up of appendicular and uh, we say it's a axial skeletal system the total bones we have in our body are around 206 uh, when the child is uh, when the child gets birth uh, it, the bones count is around 300 and more but afterwards the bone fuses together and the count comes to around 206 if at all they are not fractured isn't it 206 bones in a normal uh, human being now in the skeletal system as we know about the skeletal system there are different bones we have different joint actually the movement takes place around a joint and hence we should know what is the structure of the joint what are the joints in our body the uh, basically the structure of the joints are classified in three different things that is synanthrodial that is immovable joints the immovable joints we can see the immovable joints are located in our uh, skull and the pelvic girdle most of the bones are fused together they don't have any movement in themselves so they are said to be immovable joint the second classification of uh, joints is about the uh, what we call antiantrodial they are slightly movable joints they are located in your clavicular bone your thoracic cage and your spinal cord we can see the movement while breathing we have a certain type of movement in our chest that is a minimum expansion and contraction of the uh, chest so as to uh, ease us with the uh, respiratory system second thing we see the clavicular bones getting up and down during the respiration so they are also having a slight movement in that the third thing is when we see the spinal cord we have 33 bones in all and we bend forward we see that a little uh, movement in each bone so the bones are fused like this uh, one upon the other they are 33 in numbers so we have cervical thoracic uh, uh, lumbar sacrum and coccyx they are bifurcated in that and uh, they are aligned on each other and they have a very slight movement in themselves so we call them as the joints with slightly movable joints they have a very slight movement and the third most important actually we say when we are into sports sports is like uh, every movement okay when we walk we uh, come to uh, certain things that we get stuck with the stone and we bleed so everybody uh, say as on uh, what uh, those who are hearing to this uh, uh, webinar they have come to an accident of minimum getting injured at their toes while walking say when we are just walking and we are getting injured sports provides you thousands of movement and different uh, in different joint so there is always possibility that you come into uh, contact with any injury sports and injury are mandatory they are together they walk together they uh, stop together that's all we say that movement is life and stoppage is death hence every movement has a probability to get into injury so we need to know the structure of the body in detail so that at least we are dealing with human machine what i mean to say every mechanic deals with a vehicle so vehicle if some part is missing or a nut bolt is not fixed then also it's okay sometimes it gets through and we run on the road but if there is some mistake in your body or if you uh, are not aware of the joints and the structure of the body then it is very impossible or you don't have what i mean to say you don't have right to uh, impart training or coaching to somebody who doesn't have a basic knowledge of the body and hence everybody should have uh, the coaches and physical education teachers should have enough of knowledge about their anatomy and physiology hence they are dealing with human machine you don't have right to to spoil anybody's life see uh, many times it happens that uh, unknowingly we give certain burdens to uh, uh, the child by training Uh, unknowingly it happens that uh, it will be a lifetime loss of the child if we are not aware about the, the uh, what you call development of the child uh, once uh, uh, i would like to share an example with this uh, once i had been in contact with a uh, senior coach in gymnastics he has been training uh, his child in swimming so swimming has got certain restrictions uh, that uh, few uh, few moves in swimming are taught to uh, after 14 but uh, he has started the training to his child in early age and the ha uh, and uh, actually mishap uh, or we say it's an accident he was not knowing whether to have pressure on spine in the early age 
and the boy came to have with the lord of his uh, actually the boy was very normal in his uh, childhood at the seven but he started training with uh, higher what you call higher skills and uh, he was uh, landed into deformity so that is what actually happens uh, so everybody should have enough of knowledge uh, when we are dealing with human machine so the third classification of the joint is uh, made actually where actually more of the movements will take place with the help of the skeletal muscles the first is irregular joint here i have uh, displayed some uh, uh, diagrams or illustrations over here in the slide it is showing uh, the wrist joint the wrist joint we have different eight bones which are uh, not uh, of the same shape so they are said to be irregular joint we have lot of movements in the wrist we can uh, have uh, flexion like extension abduction adduction actually uh, this is a workshop hence i uh, i was insisting the organizers to have them practical session but anyway uh, let me have clarification on this itself uh, the illustration shows that the bones are irregular in shape and hence uh, they have different movements in that like flexion extension abduction adduction in this and uh, even circumduction but the joints are irregular so the second joint is the hinge joint which is located actually in the elbow and knee joint where we have uh, we call it uniaxial joint because we have a singular movement uh, i am also a student of martial arts uh, while uh, doing martial arts we have some locking techniques so what we do is if we know the anatomy or we know the uh, movement of the joint we have the basic structure of getting the uh, opponent into injured state as what i said just now the hinge movement which is at, uh, located at your elbow and knee it has got only singular movement like flexion and extension it doesn't have much of the movement aside so when you want to uh, injure the other person you can have this extension more with your toes and you can hyper extend it which will create an injury in the opponent this is the locking techniques which we do in the martial arts we teach Uh, most of the students uh, this is uh, related with aikido jiu jitsu the locking techniques so we do it with the help of uh, what you call knowledge of the joints if we have if we know that this joint is extendable to th this extent if we want to uh, injure the other person we can extend it more so this is a part of the game it is not actually what we are actually we uh, from the morning session we are dealing how, uh, what are the injuries and how to prevent the injuries but on the second part i would like to reflect on the other side also the one who is having the knowledge of the joints can uh, make you disable or uh, make you uh, uh, go down with the, the techniques of knowing this one so we have here uh, this one uh, i am pointing my pointer over here uh, this is elbow joint with uh, radius and ulna attached with humerus and here we have the knee joint in which the humerus is attached with uh, sorry the femur is attached with tibia fibula and the center part is patella so this is your second joint which is uh, uh, what you call freely movable joint the third joint we are considering is the neck joint where we have different movement with this movement we can say yes we can say no yeah different things different issues different gestures we can do but in sports we use this movement as a steering because i am uh, from gymnastics uh, when uh, some twisting movements are done we make use of the head to uh, uh, as a steering uh, to twist our body uh, even in martial arts while spinning he can also uh, this things we use leg of head as a steering uh, so as to uh, never miss the opponent uh, in this case now here we have this is called atlo atlanto axial joint which is t in structure like this we have different movements like you have flexion and extension we have lateral flexions over here we have uh, rotations lateral rotations here so we have different movements we can do at the neck joint next we have again the freely movable joint uh, that is condylar joint which are situated in your fingers uh, leaving this uh, thumb we have in this fingers uh, all four fingers they are oval in shape and we also uh, they are also known as metacarpal phalangeal joints so metacarpals are these bones and phalanges are these so these are called metacarpal phalangeal joint so here also we have different types of movement so we can do many movements we have uh, many things in our hands and uh, when we uh, 
catch hold of a ball or we catch hold of a bar or uh, we say uh, pole vault bar uh, pole uh, pole vault pole then we have different actions in our hand the minest uh, thing that a painter does with his hand and the most uh, serious thing which uh, also uh, can be done by a hand by holding a axe or uh, a hammer so we have different issues with the hand and these are condylar joints now we have a special joint in the thumb uh, in our uh, epics we uh, have listened to the story of uh, ekalavya uh, where the guru asked for his thumb because you have much of the things to be done with the thumb without thumb you cannot catch hold of the ball so the thumb has got a specific ability and it has got a specific structure like saddle so they, that is known as a saddle joint so with the help of thumb, uh, thumb and the uh, metacarpal phalangeal joints we have different movements in sports and we can do it very efficiently unless and until we know this one if somebody holds of your hand like tight and uh, many of the thing uh, many of the persons have the uh, what you call the tendency to break off your hand uh, like uh, crush your hand in their hands but sometimes we have the techniques uh, to remove so we what we do is uh, we just twist the uh, bone which is not actually to be done so this is a locking technique again in martial arts so you should know either to do or not to do you should have the knowledge of everything okay so knowledge of body is very much important now we have with us the uh, last joint which has got we call it a multi axial joint which is situated in your shoulders and your hip joint there is a similar joint uh, that is called ball and socket joint it is it is like a ball like this and the second one is socket we have different movements in this one we have flexion extension abduction adduction i'll show in the uh, fundamental movements we have circumduction even in the shoulder joint so this is multi axial joint we can uh, perform many movements in this even uh, this is also uh, more the movements more the possibility of injury as uh, uh, dr kartiki said uh, the swimmer shoulder we have much of the movements in shoulder then so there is much of the possibility of getting uh, injury the one who drives more vehicle has the probability of accidents on the road similarly the one joint which is involved in more of the activities is a probability uh, of having more of the injuries now we will be dealing with fundamental movements i call them the a b c d of the sport skills see we have uh, limited joints okay now we have limited movements in that joint i call them the a b c d of the uh, sport skill see when you know a b c d you can write down a word when you know different words when you have vocabulary we can write down a sentence when you have grammar and vocabulary we can write down a paragraph when you write down two or three paragraph it becomes a page and when you write down 100 pages it becomes a book it is just fantastic it's similar to that we have this fundamental movements a b c d of all sports movements so if you know this movements you can work miracles with the sportsman if you know this movements very uh, firmly what muscles are involved into it you can do miracles with the sportsman you can improve any dance sportsman with this one so we have got basic 20 movements with this one. so we have 26 alphabets uh, in english so, uh, so there are around 6 uh, lakh word with this 26 with permutation and combination similarly with the permutation and combination of this 20 movements we can develop a skill and with different skills we can develop a sports okay now sports is a book the skills are the pages and the movements are alphabets words and your sentences okay you got it this is very clear you every sportsman should know uh, the very particularly about this uh, alphabet only then he can impart training and coaching uh, very properly and scientifically now first movement is flexion what flexion is flexion is something when two joints uh, when two bones come closer to each other and the angle between them reduces around a joint they are much of the uh, in uh, they uh, i will be going with the uh, planes and axes afterwards but uh, i'll tell you they will be going with the uh, what you call frontal axis and sagittal plane there are three, three planes and three axes uh, in our body to study uh, we study our body in different parts say let us consider this skull this torso this upper extremity lower extremity similarly we have to uh, study the body in three different planes like we have frontal plane we have sagittal plane and we have uh, transversal or horizontal plane similarly we uh, 
also act we study the movements in three axes that is vertical or longitudinal axis we have frontal axis we have sagittal axis now the flexion movement takes place around the joint when two uh, bones comes closer to each other around the joint and the distance uh, and the angle between them reduces this most uh, uh, most oftenly happens in frontal axis and sagittal plane the second is when something comes closer it has to go to its own position otherwise the movements are uh, movements cannot be done in uh, future so we have got that the flexibility with us that we uh, do a movement we do a flexion and we do extension uh, similarly a coin will have two sides head center similarly everything has got two sides when something comes closer to each other it has to go away from each other similarly same in life also we have flexion and extensions within ourselves we have what is extension extension is something when the body parts goes away from each other and the angle between them increases simple and the third is hyperflexion and hyperextension sometimes we observe uh, much of the hyperextended elbows in uh, women uh, not in men but uh, in women we find hyperextended elbow and in many men Uh, who are not uh, actually they cannot be a sportsman they have hyper extended knees so the knees are extended when the normal limits of extension are crossed we say it hyper extended or when the normal limits of flexion flexion this is flexion this is normal when i press this with the other hand in applying the force from outside now this is hyper flexion now with my force i am doing this one with the other external force i am able to do more flexion that is when the normal limits of flexion are crossed we say it hyperflexion and when the normal limits of extension are crossed for uh, crossed we say it hyperextension now the figures i have shown here in the elbow and the knee we have flexion when the joints come close to each other and extension when they go away from each other fine next we have again two movements that is abduction and adduction what is abduction abduct to abduct means to move away from the origin see what is our origin here we have a central imaginary central line from where the part moves away from it when when a certain part we say something is get uh, something has been abducted abducted means it has moved from its origin so this is our imaginary central line a part is moving away from the central line we say that it's an abduction most of the time this abduction is uh, uh, will be happening in the sagittal axis and frontal plane so abduction and as i say the coin has two sides similarly the abduction will be assisted by the adduction because we have to do another movements in future isn't it so we have got that flexibility we have got that options that when the part goes away it has to come closer so that is called ab abduction adduction and abduction now we have again the uh, the hyper abduction and hyper adduction now see here i have given the illustration here when the hand goes away from the center line it is abduction when hand comes close to the center line it is adduction and when the normal limits of abduction and adduction are crossed we say it hyper abducted or hyper adducted now the third fundamental movement uh, the third major fundamental movement is circumduction which is possible at shoulder joint as i said this is a multi axial joint it has got different movement it can do different movement so at shoulder and at hip joint you can do circumduction which is created like a cone like a shape is uh, observed here uh, the hand will do its flexion extension abduction adduction it's a combination of all the four movement it does with all the uh, axis and all the planes it uh, goes along with all the planes and around all the axis hence it's circumduction and it is multi axial joint it can be observed in uh, shoulder as well as the hip joint next we have uh, rotations different types of rotations there are lateral rotations medial rotations the rotation which is medial which is said to be medial it is towards the center line now see the illustration i am pointing here when we turn our toes inside the leg turns inside similarly when we turn your our hand inside the turn, uh, hand turns inside towards the center line and that is called medial rotation when we turn it outside it is called lateral rotation now we have supination supine lying position pronation and prone lying position what is supination when we stand in anatomical standing position when the hand faces forward or when we flex the elbow at 90 degrees 
the hand faces upward then we say that it is supination uthal supination uthla hai na upar when we lay down in the same position when your chest and stomach faces the sky your back touches the ground we say it supine lying position similarly when you are standing in anatomical standing position and your palms are facing backward uh, backward or you flex when you flex your elbow at 90 degrees when your palm faces downward then you say that it is pronation palthar we will say in marathi uh, ulta hai na uh, in hindi we say it's ulta prone lying position is when your stomach and chest touches the uh, floor and your back faces the sky then we say it's prone lying position now we have these movements specifically assigned to the ankle joint and they are dorsiflexion and plantar flexion this movement takes place along sagittal plane and around frontal axis when the toes come towards your tibia then we say it's dorsiflexion when the toes point towards uh, away from the tibia we say it's plantar flexion we always see gymnasts doing plantar flexion when he is performing certain uh, uh, skills on different apparatus gymnast always does plantar flexion because of which uh, it uh, gives uh, the grace to the body so that is uh, always related to uh, ankle joint now we have the other movement with the same ankle joint inversion and eversion when inversion two uh, sole uh, sole faces inside or two sole faces each other sole means uh, the flat uh, portion of the leg on which we stand okay when they face outside we say it eversion inversion and eversion this is related just with the ankle joint so these are the movements which are possible now see this is 20 so we have got 20 alphabets with you now i have shown you all the movements which are possible at different joints neck can do your flexion extension uh, the lateral flexions even it has uh, the lateral rotations similarly the trunk can perform different uh, movements and hence they can be uh, they can have different uh, this brief uh, brief movements can uh, composed and uh, a, a skill can be performed say everybody knows about cricket a bowler is bowling a ball then what movements you can observe you can observe circumduction in the shoulder you can observe the flexion in the hip joint you can observe the flexion at the uh, knee joint you can observe the dorsiflexions at the ankle joint even the wrist movement now this is combination of different uh, alphabets uh, that is different fundamental movement which is constructing a bowling skill similarly if you have the knowledge of the joints and the joints which are uh, controlled by the muscles you can definitely work in the rackets with the sportsman now uh, this fundamental movements are assisted by different muscles uh, sharuk sir uh, do i have, have i i have time yes sir you can proceed sir you have much time 5 minutes sir 5 minutes sir. okay now in fundamental movements we are dealing with the muscular system now muscles which are uh, engaged in activity now i'll just go through it uh, we don't have time to have each and every muscle with this one i'll uh, talk about some muscles and i'll uh, read down this one. we have around 656 muscle in our jo- uh, body they are assisting uh, every skeleton to move even uh, we say that we need four to frown and 40 to laugh you know, your muscles uh, in the face are around 40 which makes you laugh so if you laugh more muscles are uh, involved if you frown say like this and then only four muscles are involved if you want to make your uh, face very bright and attractive you have to laugh more and more so that 40 muscles are involved in that so we have around 656 muscles in the body which uh, uh, creates a motion in our body which uh, uh, supports the joints which uh, helps the movement where with the help of uh, uh, different uh, say proteins and uh, what you call uh, oxygen and content now we have uh, i have written over here shoulder joint shoulder joint we have flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation here we have given pm and am i am just pointing my pointer towards this one just uh, have a look on the screen pm means prime muscles and am means assisting muscles those muscles which are assisting if you know the flexion at shoulder joint if you want to improve certain movements which involves the flexion at shoulder joint you need to stress on these muscles these muscles 
are anterior deltoid and pectoralis major these are bit uh, scientific in terms uh, so all physical education teachers and even uh, the students know about this one uh, those who are from outside may not be knowing this uh, terminology but they are very much familiar the physical education students are familiar with this names so uh, prime muscles involved in flexion of the shoulder joint is anterior deltoid and pectoralis major and the assisting muscles muscles are thoracobrachialis and biceps brachii okay so we have similarly in extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation i i'll not go with all these things uh, we have many things to go now elbow joint elbow joint again we have flexion in that also we have got prime muscles and we have got assisting when we do this flexion we say it uh, bicep curling okay this is simple exercise everybody does okay by uh, uh, after uh, holding the what you call dumbbell or something else you do this movement what you are developing you are developing this muscle this is known as biceps brachii so you can see here the prime muscles involved are biceps brachii brachialis brachioradialis these are related with all these things and you have this development around a joint the assisting muscles are pronator teres flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi ulnaris palmaris longus flexor digitorum superficialis now these are the uh, these are assisting muscles which are uh, helping the flexion in the elbow joint similarly we have extension uh, in the elbow joint i'll not go through everything trunk region again we have flexion extension rotation to the same side rotation to the opposite side and lateral flexion now when we Uh, dealing with uh, trunk muscles we have different muscles with that the basic muscles are rectus abdominis external obliques internal obliques and the assisting muscles are psoas while doing flexion at the trunk region similarly we have extension rotation to the same side rotation to the opposite side and lateral flexion these movements are possible at the trunk region only with the help of these muscles if you know these muscles and the exercises for these muscles you can efficiently bring out with flexion extension rotation to the same side those movements which are uh, attached to this uh, basic uh, fundamental movements can be the skills can be performed very easily if the muscles are strong to support them okay next we have a hip joint with us the similarly we hip joint we have uh, flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation again the muscles are involved just i'll go through the flexion muscles the prime muscles are psoas iliacus rectus femoris pectineus assisting muscles are sartorius tensor facility gracilis adductor longus adductor brevis so these are the muscles which are involved in flexion of the hip joint okay now we have uh, extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation with this one uh, we'll move further the last joint is knee joint uh, where we have flexion and only extension because it's a hinge joint we have only uh, say uh, we, we call it uniaxial joint and we have flexion and extension the prime muscles involved are semitendinosus semimembranosus biceps femoris and the assisting muscles are sartorius gracilis gastrocnemius and plantaris so we have again extension they are there we have the prime muscles involved so we will not go through it very uh, deeply now i'll deal with the planes and axes as i told earlier we have uh, working in three planes and we are uh, dealing with three axes when we are going to study uh, the human motion we need to bifurcate something so as you cannot randomly study the movement you should have different things to study or you should have the parameters to study you should have the calibration to study uh, what to be done so we have here uh, the axis uh, the one which cuts you uh, left and right is your uh, sagittal plane uh, one which cuts your front and back it's your uh, frontal plane it is not exactly cutting it is just imaginary plane it is not cutting you and the third one is which is uh, dividing your upper and lower so we have the three different uh, so this is transversal or horizontal plane similarly we have three axes which is uh, uh, around which the movement takes place they are sagittal axis frontal axis and the Uh, longitudinal or vertical axis we have vertical axis from top to bottom we have sagittal axis from front to back we have uh, uh, frontal axis from side to side so along around which the movement takes place we have three planes and we have three axis here i have given the description about the uh, divides left and right uh, frontal plane and the transversal horizontal plane the axis uh, now 
just I'll go through a brief thing about the posture. Posture is very important in this uh, as posture keeps you uh, erect. Now see, the typical standing position of an individual is called posture. Posture, we say, uh, is the personality acha hai. We say personality acha hai. What do we mean by personality acha hai? We see the physical appearance and we say that uh, this is good and this is bad. Sometimes we see different structures in the body. Sometimes we see the di different uh, makeup of the body. And here we have seen the line which is segmented in a straight line is a perfect posture. See, head is uh, the center of gravity of head is exactly lying on the center of gravity of your torso. The same center of gravity exactly lying on the uh, lower extremities center of gravity. Now, this is your perfect uh, posture. We say perfect posture. If you are constructing a wall, you put on the uh, bricks one upon the other. You cannot put the bricks like this. If the bricks are like this, then the wall is weak. Similarly, our bricks should be also kept the head on torso, the torso on lower extremities. They are they should also be aligned in a straight line. Only then we have we have a perfect what you call posture. So we uh, if unnecessarily we are straining, we are we can see that the back is straining over here. Most of the times, most of the times we have observed that the females are pregnant and they have the stomach bulged only for nine months. But the males are having the bulge stomach all the, what you call after say certain age, they will be carrying uh, the stomach uh, throughout their life. So this is just irony, okay. The female is carrying uh, the stomach for just nine months, okay. If after nine months she is complaining about the back pain, lower back pain, then what about the males? What the, they are carrying the stomach for uh, say 20 years, 30 years till they die. Okay, so this is not good, I think so. You should control your stomach. Okay, fine. Now, see, we have importance of good posture. What is good posture? Better working of organs and body system. As the posture is good, you can see the organs are working in a very um, comfortable manner. Less tension at the joints and ligaments. Definitely, we can see no pains in the joints. If the pains are there, then uh, think that uh, something is uh, what you call um, the muscles are contracted in such a phase. They are contracted for all the time. So you see, if somebody is standing uh, on a street or uh, near some shop, uh, he tries to pull his leg. Uh, sometimes uh, more weight on right leg, sometimes on left leg. Sometimes he puts his hand in his pocket and he just... Uh, protrudes its uh, uh, what you call lower back in front of uh, this one. Sometimes he goes to the wall and touches his back and stand with the help of uh, wall. So this is just an indication of lack of good posture or what you call say the muscles are not in efficiency to catch hold of his uh, body structure. Now we have got less energy cost. Aesthetic appeal is okay. Fantastic. So personality is good. Aesthetic appeal is Yeah. This is the aesthetic appeal. Average location of center gravity is in the middle of the base. Yes, definitely. It has to be in the base. Otherwise, uh, you cannot have a good posture. Weight-bearing segments of the body are in the position of extension, but the extension is not accompanied by the stress. Most of the time, when you stand, most of the time you see that the soldiers are standing for eight hours together and they are in a very erect position because of their conditioning and their perfect structure. Now, factors affecting posture. What are the factors they are affecting the posture? It's alignment of body segments. They, if they are not in a good position, strength and flexibility of the muscles. Every day you need to work out. Uh, every day you need to uh, pour some time for your body because body is giving everything to you and you are just neglecting it. So you, I think you should spare at least an hour out of 24 to keep your body erect and uh, what you call uh, run all the organs in a systematic manner. Heredity also affects posture. Injury and disease. Most of the time we have uh, long-term injuries and we see that uh, uh, it will create some disturbance in your posture. Even the imitation. We have our hero, uh, what we call um, an ideal, somebody, a hero or heroine or some uh, sportsman or as he does, we do the same thing and we are not built as he is built. Okay. But we try to imitate them and due, due to imitation also, sometimes we see Galli Dada, Galli Ke Dada, they are like this. Okay. Many times we see Galli Ka Dada. Okay. Fine. But this is just an imitation. It is, uh, I think some picture might have shown that Galli Ka Dada will be like this uh, asymmetric shoulder wala. Then uh, somebody, uh, many of them are imitating and we see many people like that. Now, uh, 
similar sports training like hockey every time you bend and uh, perform this thing uh, it will also create some problem uh, work condition or professions say we say tailor or we can say the cobbler uh, or they have a similar pattern of working pattern and hence uh, this particular type of muscles are involved into it and they have got a bad posture work tight clothes and shoes many times we see that uh, due to some picture effect uh, or zero effect you put on some clothes which are weird which does not suits you and which does not suits your body but still we try to put it on very very uh, what you call uh, uneasily and then we have some problems and fatigue uh, yeah condition most of the time is uh, what you call uh, fatigue condition pregnancy in women i just now i have said we have certain uh, few uh, postural deformities which uh, we should know as a sportsman because we are hunting the talent as uh, we can uh, identify it in an early age we can uh, uh, assist the parents or we can ask them we can suggest them to go to the uh, uh, what we call uh, orthopedician or uh, expert over there the uh, few things are kyphosis forward head uh, i'll show the figures after this slide uh, it is abducted scapula asymmetric shoulders asymmetric back scoliosis c and s lordosis poor chest mechanics hyperextended knees bow legs that is also known as genu verum uh, knock knees uh, we might have observed this genu valgum high q angle this is bit complicated for a common man this can be known by a physical education teacher tbl torsion angle ankle deviation uh, high foot and low foot arches uh, this is also known as press palmus and press cap now i'll show the last slide which is uh, with this few uh, picture which can we can see the knock knees and uh, in, uh, the this one scoliosis c scoliosis s scoliosis this is uh, the curvature here then we have the what do you call um, kyphosis then we have high foot and low foot arches uh, the normal the bow legs and the knock knees uh, here we have the protruded uh, what do you call lower back uh, then the finger positions okay now these are few deformities which we should come to know as a physical education teacher because when we are hunting a talent and we are spending lot of uh, we are investing lot of things we are undergoing training for 10 years or 12 years or 15 years all together we will be spoiling spoiling the career of the child because if we are promising that he can achieve uh, his best but if he is uh, deformed with uh, the postural things uh, he has to be corrected first and then um, the sports performance can be achieved so lastly i can uh, i'll stop here saying that i know only one thing that i know nothing it is said by socrates so we are just part of it and thank you very much thank you one and all thank you thank you so much okay sir the, for the such an intellectual and biological uh, information you have shared and made us aware about the mechanism of fundamental movements in our body and especially for uh, guidance you have given is really beneficial for us to build a good sports personality thank you so much sir now it's time for a question answer session so i would like to request dr sachin deshmukh sir to move with the question answer session uh, good afternoon everyone all the speakers are unmuted please Uh, all the speakers are received lot of questions first i am going to ask the kartiki madam so so many questions i recorded from the youtube as well as the zoom also they have questions shoulder injury dislocation how to prevent and how you have to recover that injury after the shoulder injury madam please so shoulder injury dislocation uh, it is mainly caused because of the trauma so as my topic was overuse injury so overuse causes some damage but for a dislocation to happen we need to have a trauma and if there is an acute trauma there can be a dislocation whereas with the overuse what happens it generally happens with the age because the muscles get weaker the tendons which support the shoulder joint they get weaker and then the shoulder gets dislocated from its cavity so if you have good posture as coach sir has just said uh, 
uh, he has talked about the posture and even in my slide the upper back muscles the rotator cuff muscles if they are strong enough then there are chances that the shoulder uh, dislocation can be prevented but if the trauma is really high then you will have to undergo with the treatment which follows the shoulder dislocation okay thank you madam uh, next question is uh, jain sir 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 <coughs> yes sir sir uh, what is the meaning of pen scale sorry so what is the meaning of pen scale pen ka scale hai, what is the meaning as a pen scale the question hello huh? हेलो सर एक्चुअली इफ एनी शॉर्ट हेलो सर हाँ सर आई कैन हियर यू ओके नाउ यू कैन हियर मी यस यस हेलो सर प्लीज जैन सर हाँ सर यस सर हाँ, what is the meaning of pen scale, elbow injury, and knee injury? Can you please repeat the question? What is how to measure? So they are asked, sir. So what is the meaning of pen? So what is the meaning of the VS pen scale, the VS scale, visual analog scale? Okay, okay, okay. What is pen scale, visual analog scale? Yes, sir. Ah, has. Can you hear me? Yes, आवाज आ रही है सर मेरी. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible now. अभी आवाज आ रही है. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you. Ah, we can hear you. A knee, knee. What about uh, knee and क्या पूछा था आपने? Can you please repeat the question? Pain scale and pain scale, knee injury and elbow injury, tennis elbow. Tennis elbow, knee injury. How to measure? Okay. How to measure the pain scale? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, uh, pain is zero yes. to ten is the. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Yes, Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Karen, sir. Yes, we can hear you. हाँ, अभी आवाज आ रहा है ना सर? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yes, okay, yes sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, basically, what happened when you have a pain in your knee or in your elbow joint, the pain is measured from a visual analog scale. A VS scale is commonly used for measuring the any kind of pain, whether it is from your knee joint, from your elbow joint, or any kind of sport-related injury. So zero is no pain, one is starting, and five is the minimum fifty percent of the pain, and ten zero to ten is the scale. होता है जिसका हम pain को okay, zero is no pain, one is the starting of the pain, pain, and ten is the maximum pain of your Injured area. Hello. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got it. Okay. Shibu, sir. Collected from YouTube. So may I ask, Kote sir? Kote sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, how do I know if I tore my ACL? So ACL means high bone and knee connecting. Yes. How do you know ACL? If I tore my ACL, 
Okay, anterior. Yeah, ACL, ACL, yes. Okay. Anterior cruciate ligament injury. Hello. Ah, yes, sir. Yes. You want to know about anterior cruciate ligament? Yes, injury? sir. Anterior. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, I had been uh, through that injury, uh, so I can tell you very well uh, what are the feelings are uh, uh, about it because I have experienced it. Uh, uh, this is uh, the injury which is uh, actually caused uh, due to over uh, straining at the knees. First of all, let me tell you, I have been uh, got injured uh, while I was uh, doing certain movement, twisting movement. My lower body was intact with the floor and my upper body uh, turned and which created a torque in my knee joint. And it has got, uh, the, uh, the injury was severe uh, due to the torque. torque uh, you are you getting me? Sharuk sir, sun rahe ho? Sun sak rahe ho? Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine, fine. Uh, so uh, the torque has created the injury. Uh, it was uh, partial at the time, but uh, afterwards uh, I I have not uh, what you call uh, done any treatment on that, and it has uh, taken to a severe problem. Now, every time I do certain things, uh, it uh, my knee locks and uh, sometimes I don't have the weight bearing segments with me. So uh, it's very difficult. And to avoid that one, what I mean to say is you need to strengthen your uh, muscles, which are uh, what you call uh, uh, supporting the knee joint. They are the uh, calf muscles, the hamstring and the quadriceps, which actually uh, supports your knee joint. Uh, because we don't have anything at the knee. We are supported with the surrounding muscles uh, uh, by the joint, with the surrounding muscles. So, <laughs> hence, uh, do uh, flexions and extensions uh, along with the weight, uh, uh, with the medicine balls we can do, with the uh, weight, uh, uh, what you call aerobics, you can do uh, these exercises. Even uh, in gym also, we can uh, continue with this exercise. You have to strengthen your surrounding muscles. They are uh, hamstring, quadriceps, and your uh, gastrocinemius, that is calf muscles, most, more of them. And hence, you can avoid that injury. And for the second thing, uh, actually, that is load-bearing part. Uh, you need to control your weight, first of all. If you have uh, controlled your weight, then I think uh, your uh, pre present uh, weight. So, uh, less the weight, more will be the strength in the joints which are uh, bearing. Uh, only then you can sustain uh, or you can uh, overcome the injury. Yes, sir. Got it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Next. Sir, sir. Uh, we received a lot of questions, but due to time constraint, uh, I just want to take uh, your permission. I can share, share your uh, email ID to the participants. They can ask the questions on your email. If you allow us, then I can share your email, sir. Definitely, definitely. Sir, yes. uh, one question to Sibu, sir. Uh, what is rehabilitation? What is, the, what is the rehabilitation? And how to return to play due to menses injuries? Sibu, sir. What is... Yes. Um, hello. Are we together? Can um, am I audible enough? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is rehabilitation? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Well, rehabilitation is the stage where you recover. Rehabilitation is recovery, and that is the process you give an injury to fall back to where it was. And, and that takes time, particularly when we are referring rehabilitation uh, as a, a high altitude injury that you have uh, in, incurred, mainly, uh, let, let me say, frostbite. It will be the time that it will take uh, when you realize that you have the injury up until you have gone through the process of treating it and then up to the stage where it is all treated. That is the rehabilitation period um, that is, is per the question is asked. And there was another question as well. Uh, if I can hear, the, get that one, please.
there was a second question. If I can hear that one, please, as well. Yeah. So, thank you, sir. I'll share your mail ID to the participants. They have a lot of questions. They can ask you through mail, sir. If your permission is giving. Okay. Yes, sir. Of now, course, of course, of course. Anytime, yes. They can. You yes. can send them. They can send them via email. I'll be able to attend to them as I please. I appreciate. Yes, that. sir. Yes. And uh, thank you very much, all the speakers. You are giving nice answers to the the participant. Now we can further the closing of this program. I over to Sharuk. Sharuk, please carry on. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, uh, may I request Dr. Shashikant Shirshad, sir, principal of Manik Chand Pahadi Law College, Aurangabad, to kindly express concluding remark, uh, Dr. Shirshad, sir. And in his memory, the six people from the Aromba city, they came together and they had a dream to organize a, one online webinar which can give a more important information to all our sports class. God has created this earth. On this earth, we, the human being, are taking birth. We are having a very good body. At the same time, it is everybody's duty that he should take proper care of his as well as have the good health. Unfortunately, there are certain accident may cause. There are may happen. Because of that, many sportsmen or any human being may get injury. That injury may be a physical injury. That injury may be a severe injury. And if any injury is caused to our body, then in that case, we get helpless. We cannot live. We cannot enjoy our life with such injured limbs. And therefore, by considering this situation, we have organized this particular workshop by taking the subject on sports injuries and prevention. I am damn sure that this today's word, any injury is dangerous, which can take life. If it doesn't take life, but if any injury causes, so definitely that person cannot survive in this world with happiness. And dear friend, therefore it is everybody's duty that he should protect his body. He should not suffer with any kind of the injuries. And therefore, Dr. So Indira Bai Patak Mahila Kala Mahavidalaya, SB College of Arts and Commerce, Aurangabad, SB College of Science, Aurangabad, Rajashi Shahu, Arts and Science College, Waduns, Aurangabad, and Indra Raj Arts, Commerce and Science College, Sillo District, Aurangabad. These colleges have taken a great efforts to bring a such international personalities just for interact with us. And here I proudly say that for this particular webinar, we received a overwhelming corners of the world. It is a great pleasure to inform you that here the total participant registered numbers are in the workshop of this international. And many members from the 120 from many countries like Greece, Dubai, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, America, Argentina, Belgium, Australia, Nepal, China, Brazil, and India. So with this, whatever the aim we have considered, I hope 
it is a success of our this webinar to make this particular great success a certain people are instrument of faith and we have to very thankful to this people i will take the names dr vishwaksha jain sir who is a physiotherapist mr sibu siso vilane dr kartiki shiradkar and dr shatrunjay kote this resource person has given a very wonderful ideas and very you know, good tips which can help how to overcome these injuries and how to rehabilitate from such kind of the injuries therefore on behalf of all people i am thankful for this resource person and all the participants are getting a very good response you will see they how uh, they had a very good questions but because of the paucity of time they are not able to uh, consider all the question not only that here a certain management people are also behind us who has contributed lot to organize this particular webinar so here i will take some names from our society marathwada legal and general societies all management members as well as all the members of saraswati bhavan education society as well as the parivartan education society talna ajanta education and military preparatory institute aurangabad all these honorable management members are help us a very lot and they are always providing us a guidance as well as the good suggestions for organizing this particular webinar at the same time i will take the names of my all colleagues the senior faculties the principal of the colleges that is dr vasudha purohit madam makrand paithankar sir dr balaji nagtilak sir dr nilkantha alte sir and dr pramod sharma sir dear friend when we are organizing any kind of the event this event cannot complete in a one day for this lot of struggle many technical uh, teams required many efforts everybody is required to take and for this many people they are striving hard to get this success and therefore i will take the few names of these people who have contributed lot to get this success dr dayanand kamle sir professor manisha wagmare sir wagmare madam dr vishal deshpande sir dr madhav singh ingle professor madhukar wakre sir and dr sachin deshmukh who have strive hard to get this success not only that our team members dr jagdish vidas mr manoj bhujbal and shubham jaiswal also constantly taking the efforts to get this great achievement or the success of this event at the same time our student mr sharukh has also made a very wonderful role a role in organizing or conducting this particular webinar no no this webinar i think helpful for us for our future life mission and i am thankful for the organizers who have given me the opportunity to conclude this great and successful event thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much now uh, i request dr sachin deshmukh sir to express our gratitude on behalf of the organizers dr deshmukh sir yes sir good afternoon to all i dr sachin deshmukh from mp law college aurangabad as we come to the closing of online international workshop sports injury and prevention 
it is my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks to all who have helped make this event success one successful one at the first i would like to thank management for giving permission and organizing this workshop in collaboration with the, all the colleges also gave courage and support thanks to all the respected management members uh, marathwada legal and general education society aurangabad saraswati bhuvan education society aurangabad parivartan education society jalna and ajanta education society and military preparatory institute of aurangabad on behalf of all the organizing team i sincerely thanks to all the renowned speakers namely shibu suso vilane from africa dr kartiki shiradkar dr vishwa akash jain lnip kolyer and dr shatrunjay kote sir principal of msm college aurangabad i am thankful to all the respected principal dr vasudha purohit madam principal of sau indira bai bhaskar rao pathak mahila kala mahavidyalay dr s g sirsad sir principal manikchan pahade law college aurangabad dr makrand paithankar principal of saraswati bhavan education society college of arts and commerce aurangabad dr balaji uh, nag tilak sir principal of saraswati bhavan education society college of science aurangabad dr nishikant alte principal of rajeshri chau arts and science college walus aurangabad dr pramod sharma principal of indra raj arts commerce science college sillod i also thanks to the technical support without technical support we can't success now this is the online that's why i have really great thanks to the dr jagdish vyas sir manoj bujbar and shubham jaiswal i also thanks to the teaching and non teaching staff for helping us our sincere thanks to the all the participants and delegates who are present on zoom and youtube live for the workshop make this workshop it great success i also thanks to the today's program anchor our student sharuk ahmed agimia shah he is a inter uh, university player as well as national player badminton for his wonderful anchoring for this program to conclude of vote of thanks let me once again thanks to one and all who helped us directly or indirectly way to make this event great success thank you very much from the all the key speakers thank you very much once again over to sharuk the workshop is over hey, i'll take the permission from the principal sir and i'll announce this workshop is over thank you sir with the permission of honorable speakers and honorable dignitaries i declare on behalf of organizers that workshop as accomplished thank you sir thank you